don't classify me, read me. I'm a writer, not a genre. If music is a place, then jazz is the city. Folk is the wilderness, rock is the road. Classical is a temple. There is only one genre in fiction. The genre is called book. Ladies, gentlemen, and variations thereupon, this is Modern Escapism. Hello, my name is Oodles, and I am alive and back in the hosting chair. I hope you enjoyed my absence, but playtime is over. Today, I am joined by, if he were a genre, he'd definitely be in the tough northern biopic subgenre, Tyneside Dystopia. It's Gadget. All right. <laughs> if she was a genre, it'd be in a historical epic filled with abs, boobs, wine, and blood. It's yeah. Candy Machine. Hello. <laughs> and probably Willies. Yep. And if he embodied a genre, I think it's fair to say it would be a Jane Austen-esque romanticism costume drama. It's Stig. What? <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't be. It would be a hospital drama. Have you seen the amount of times this boy's been injured? <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, Biggie's not very well. So we've given him the night off, but we all know what genre he'd be, don't we? Parno. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Pure Parno. But yes, uh, before we continue with the... Oh, the entertainment. We've got some corporate shilling to do. And I know just the guy. He's made of crisps, but he's really good at shilling. Yeah, good at the selling. So if you like what we do, we have a Patreon. And if you head over to patreon.com forward slash modern escapism, on there you'll find the three tiers that we do. First up is modern escapees for £5 a month. That will get you an extended edition of this episode every week, as well as at least one monthly special and any other specials that we do. If you are into uh, Dungeons and Dragons podcasts, we do one called "Do Dragons Dream of Scott Sheep," and for five pound, damn it, five pound, five, pa- five pound, <laughs> <laughs> five pounds a month, that will get you ad-free early access of the podcast, as well as any artwork, music, character sheets, maps, and anything we put together for the show. And you'll also be able to suggest NPC names and items for gadget to use, which we finally had some. Yes. yes. Finally had some in the most recent episode, so keep them coming in. Yes, and I got I got the name of who submitted it wrong as well because I was drunk. Oh, mate! <laughs> it was never mind. He's been informed. He's fine with it. And <laughs> our people so, spoken to his people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For seven pound fifty, the biggie bundle that gets you everything. Excellent, brilliant. It's Thank also you. it's oh. it's also worth pointing out that we're two thirds of the way to our first stretch goal as well. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so, we need you know, to. If, if 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 you if you want to hear um, Oodles' script for uh, Hans' baby, yep, the re- banger the, that the, never has been but will yes. be. Yes, <laughs> yes, the ad- the adaptation of the source material for Die Hard. I've actually added a few songs us. to it as well. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Now a musical. <laughs> if you want to hear that, get subscribed into the Patreon. Also, please remember that you have one week left to submit your Patreon sections selections for us. Uh, so please get them in. When this comes out, the next recording, we will, yeah, we will, we will choose what we'll be doing because the fifth will be doing that recording. So we need to let you know on the twenty eighth recording, which comes out the second. So yeah, get that in for us if you're a Patreon subscriber. Yeah, patrons, this is your chance to be a producer. Yeah. Come on, an executive you, producer. You choose what we do. Come on, do it, do it, just do it, just do it, do it, do it, do it. Excellent. Right. So, Candy. What have you been up to this week? A couple of things this week. Um, I started, I'm going to do a sports one. Weren't expecting that. Yo, what? Yeah. what? What? I saw an ice hockey game on Saturday. I went to see the Bristol Pitbulls who have been playing. Um, we only just got a new ice rink. They've been playing in Oxford for the last 10 years. Wow. So it was one of their first home, home, properly home games in a long time. And um, oh, it was so much fun. I've missed ice hockey so much. I used to go all the time when about 20 years ago and just sort of fizzled out because I wasn't able to. Big um, lads, it, aren't they? Yeah, but it was really nice because it was like I recognised a lot of the names and they're obviously like the sons of the players that I used to watch. So it's cute oh. that it was all kind of kept in the family. Mm. So that it's, was nice. It's funny because obviously we talked about that on our Patreon 
mm. uh, podcast, didn't we? About uh, you doing ice hockey and that. So for that to have happened, like literally the week after. Yeah, it cool. was kind of it was kind of synergy. Meant to be. That. But um, yeah, I took my friend and she she'd never seen an ice hockey game and uh, she thoroughly so enjoyed it. It's so fast. Oh my god, it's so fast and so violent. I absolutely love it. It's different when you watch it on telly because I don't think cameras can keep up. It's that, and the, the games that you actually see on TV are just not quite the same because mm. you usually see NHL games on TV, which is a lot mm. of passing and passing and passing and passing. But the lower <laughs> leagues in England, it's a lot of um, lots of people chasing the puck around and hitting it's each rug- other. Rugby on ice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. So that yeah, r- really fun. We ended up uh, probably going to get season tickets, I would think. Nice. In fact, I already have. My friend does not know this yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but the other thing I went to see this week and I think Stig might want to join me on this one is I went Ooh, to see tag team. Ghostbusters yes 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 yes, yes. come yeah. on come on I, feed me feed me I enjoyed it it was <laughs> wow. leaps and bounds better than the 2016 version <laughs> so oh. much better so yeah. much better I mean I, it's still no comparison to the originals I think I think watching it again I would probably find it a little bit slow um, oh. but it was it was really enjoyable um McKenna Grace, the little girl who's kind of the main character in it. She's absolutely just adorable. She's cute as a button. She kind of put her own spin on it as well. She didn't kind of take on any mannerisms of... I think it's public knowledge, isn't it, that who she's Spangler's, related to? Spangler's, Spangler's granddaughter. Yeah. yeah, so I didn't, want it, I didn't want that to be a spoiler, but I think that's already out. So <laughs> it's she in didn't the trailer. Take, yeah, <laughs> she didn't take on any of his mannerisms. She kind of did her own thing. Um, they didn't give Finn Wolfhard a whole lot to do, I didn't think. He was kind of more of a background character. Um, mm. But yeah, no, really enjoyed it. I, I would have liked for them to focus on maybe a few more adult characters because Ghostbusters was never about kids, really, was it? It was always it always focused on the adults. But... I don't think there was an actual kid character until Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Didn't really count. Yeah. Um, but no, I think for a new generation, it was really nice. Um and there was an unexpected sad moment at the end and I cried ugly and I cried hard. And I went, I was there by myself as well. So I was just there in the cinema, just weeping. I've been doing um, some crying this week as well. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. But there, there was lots of kids in the audience, which was cu- cool. Mm. Um, there's a family behind me and it's, this isn't a spoiler again because it was in the trailer, but you know, there's this kind of mini marshmallow men in the packet. Love them. Yeah. yeah. The, the kids behind me were absolutely pissing themselves. It was, yeah, I love them. It was adorable. It was so cute. So it's so nice to hear children actually enjoying the film. But yeah, recommend it. If you haven't gone to see it, go see it. It's, uh, you won't be disappointed, I don't think. It's not the original, but it's great anyway. Excellent. I think this is a great segue to nip over to uh, Sir Stig there. Yeah, I loved it. Absolutely yes. loved it. Um, two uh, for two. Yeah, it isn't Ghostbusters, but it's not trying to be. It has that, um, it does have a Stranger Things slash Goonies style element to it, but obviously it's mixed in with no- Ghostbuster nostalgia. It's not a bad it, thing, that though, is it? <laughs> no, it, it's it's a film on how you do fan service right. Because it, 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 well, just from the trailer, because obviously I haven't seen it, but it looks like it just it's, it refers a lot back to it, but it's still its own story. Mm, I'd agree yes, with that. Yes, yes. And, and it feels very much like this is a, a direct sequel to. The first film with what goes one. on it, what goes on in it, and what happens in it. It's, it feels like a, a sequel, but obviously years down the line. And um, I, I like the action. I like the kids, and I didn't find any of the kids annoying, which I always think is a bonus mm. in a film. Yeah. Even even the little boy they had at the beginning, who was a podcaster, and start talking about conspiracy theories. And I was like, oh, here we go. I fucking hate <laughs> I got, I got the podcaster <laughs> being the weird one and everything. But no, he was great. I really I liked him. To him. Yeah, his comedy <laughs> was was brilliant. So I was happy they didn't go down the stereotypical route with with him. And so, not, so not like a Godzilla versus King. Oh, Kong. yeah, it was so a bad. Podcaster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when he started talking about conspiracy theories and things like that, I was like, oh, that's what. It, it brought to mind oh. all the stupid <laughs> podcasters in Halloween. Like, oh, so luckily they don't they understand do what that. podcasters actually are, no. do they? A lot of them. And he was no. great. I really liked him. He, he was really good. Uh, Paul Rudd was fucking incredible. Yeah, he's always good. So good. And he, he a reliable bet. Yes, he did. He kind of took on that um, Rick Moranis kind of role of Ooh, the really bit of the goofy, funny uh, character. Is Paul Rudd it. the new Rick Moranis? <laughs> 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 Oh, Biggie's going to be devastated. <laughs> Just oh, much, you mean much, the more, ha- much more handsome, yeah. 
Yeah, he's not going to be devastated, trust me. <laughs> At least for a year. <laughs> no, I joked. Everyone in it. Carrie Coon was good. She was fun. Yeah. As the mum. And uh, yeah, it, it is a bit slow to start with. I'll agree with that. Like the first kind of half is a slow build up, getting to know the characters, getting to know what's going on in the town. But obviously, once the action ramps up, once the ghosts start to come, and once she's. Think she, about it, though. It starts Think linking about to it. it. In, the, um, in the second one. They didn't put the proton packs on until the court scene, which is like 45 minutes in. That's quite slow. Yeah. I always like no. the second one. I, I do. People, it's people, not as good. Some, <laughs> it's not as good. Some people, people hate it, but I always like the second one. I thought yeah, it was, it was a it fun was film. Fine. Mm, I can't fine. understand how this is a 12A and the original is still a PG, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, God. Maybe get, maybe get the BBFC to revisit that yeah. one. Yeah, because other than like, there's a few jump scares in this, which like scared the kids, but... Other than that, it wasn't. There's was nothing on there. The level of like the librarian. There's less swearing. There's no like blowjob references. Oh, smoking every second. There's of no the smoking. Thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, I think so, there were there were there were a few adult jokes, weren't there? But oh not, yeah, <laughs> we're like Pixar I, I level. Literally, the joke yeah. in your a joke about uh, humping, and Amelia said turned to me and said, "What does that mean?" <laughs> Rabbit stew, darling. And I was like, "Don't worry oh. about it." <laughs> <laughs> is it is it played as a comedy? Because I know that because one thing I always liked about the original Ghostbusters is that it's not explicitly a comedy, but it's a, it's, yeah, it's not like stripes it, it, and it's, stuff, is it? It's not. Yeah, it's it, it's a romp that happens to have very funny people in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where Paul Rudd comes in. I think there wasn't much com- uh, comedy with the kids. Um, kids are funny. What- because yeah. because that that was again that was the problem I had with the 2016 one where it was entirely played for laughs and it yeah. didn't feel. Good, I, th- I think the know? kid. I think the lads. The podcaster lad was the the comedy for the kids but yeah most of the comedy comes from Paul Rudd and uh, the little marshmallows which were <laughs> I mean I'd seen most of that scene in the um, build up stuff I'd bit. seen and yeah because that scene was going around Twitter and it was in the trailer and stuff like that but like it's still it looked great loved it. yeah the prop had me laughing those little marshmallows yeah, I like you them. know what I thought to myself because it was uh, that scene is set in Walmart I was like that's, that's probably not the weirdest thing that's happened in a Walmart no way no, no. not a chance but the um, there's a yeah there's a, obviously there's a lovely Harold Ramis uh, tribute in this really and when it's this isn't a secret everyone knows that the original characters are in this yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen I've seen them pop up in trailers they, and the voices as well when they turn up it's they just fit straight back into those roles it oh, is weird yes. it doesn't feel like they're trying too hard to be in the you know try being tri- Two tryhards. What I'm trying to say. Sorry. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, a, it's Dan Aykroyd turning up as a taxi driver or anything like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. No, no, it's them. It's <laughs> the same guys. Free ghost. I'm not touching that. No, that and it's like, brilliant. The only, the only one missing is Rick Moranis, but everyone else is in there. It's, well, it's Paul Rudd is the new Rick Moranis. So oh, he is. To... Yeah. <laughs> they were just knackered old Ghostbusters, weren't they? That's exactly what they were. Just grumpy old men. Yeah. Apart was... from Winston, who seems to be the same age. Yeah, Winston. Winston has aged very well. Ernie yeah. Hudson. Ernie Hudson's he's, done he's well done for quite himself. a bit of acting though, like on like shows and that since then, yeah. hasn't he? He's, he's, he's been constantly working as Ernie Hudson. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just full of full of nostalgia. It is literally a, a proper fan service. It kind of does that false awakening thing where it, it plays with a lot of the same beats and stuff from the first but film. Very entertaining, nonetheless. Yeah, and loads of times I've got ghost bump. Goosebumps, goosebumps, <laughs> like the the moment that the sirens come on. It's like mm. regardless of the fact that I've seen the original loads of times, and I'd never get that feeling when I watch that film. As soon as Ecto One's flying down the road and the, and those sirens come on, because they're very distinct noise, don't they? It's yeah, forties it yeah. ambulance, isn't it? Yeah, forties ambulance. I'm not yeah. forties, uh, sixties, I think. But yeah, they came on, and that got. I was loving that bit, and I also oh. cried twice. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. This, this, yeah, it had me cry. And then, right, obviously, right there, and there's obviously a for Harold. You know, they always do that when yeah. someone's passed away, and that got me again. And Oof. there's just a bit at the beginning as well, which put a massive smile on my face. And I thought, if that had been it, I'm not going to get into too many spoilers, but if they'd have just done that, I'd have been like, yeah, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I really, I'm so happy about this. And I actually recorded a pod, uh, uh, with Punk this week. That was the other thing I did. I went on his podcast and I recorded about, not, I'm not going to give it away because he likes to do his own little previews and stuff. <laughs> but I wish I'd have now waited to watch this film before doing that because it links into what I wanted to talk about on that show. Right. So, oh. Yeah, I loved it. Um, I've seen a lot of positive reviews about it. I've 
You know, I have. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, it was great. Brilliant. It was worth that little... Didn't they ever... They knocked it back a little bit, didn't they? Mm. Polish it up and that, so... Yeah. yeah that's good. That's good. And also, also pushed it out the path of Bond and Dune. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't yeah. be daft. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing I would have loved, the only one other thing I would have loved in that, and that, this would have just been, it didn't need to be in there, but you know the song that plays in, at the end? Um, I, don't know what it, I don't know what the name of the song is, but I know the tune. It's like that. I think that's. Um, I think that's Bobby Brown. Yeah, I just. I think it's Bobby just Brown. Chuck that in the. In the He's been cancelled though. Has he? <laughs> yeah. I think it's Bobby Brown. I might be wrong. Write oh, well, in and let me know. If, if it is, then yeah, maybe not. Maybe don't use that, that song. <laughs> yeah. but. Oh, and actually, the music in it. It's loads of. Uh, Loads of callbacks to and sounds that you'll recognise from the uh, from the first film, but not so much that it doesn't have its own sound mm. to the film. So please tell me Ray Parker Jr. is in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, excellent, perfect. That's all I ever wanted from another Ghostbusters film. Mm. Cool, cool, excellent, excellent. Let's let's move swiftly on. Conscious of time, um, I'm going to jump in now. Gadget, sorry. <laughs> Rude. Rude. And I want to talk about two things pretty quickly. Um, I started watching Hellbound um, on Netflix. It is a another South Korean banger of a show. Ooh, are we going to get you pronouncing some South Korean names? No, because I haven't written them down this time. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't got the excuse of being ill. So I'm just not doing it. It's got some <laughs> lovely people in it. <laughs> And I'm only like three episodes in, but it's got a rate, really mad concept. Um, and this you get this in the trailer on Netflix, where basically, um, like an entity comes to you in a, a certain point in your life and says, "You're gonna die in three days at two o'clock," and you go into hell. You're like, "Oh no!" So you've got a little bit of a countdown, and then when the countdown hits, these three. Like smoke, charcoal, incredible Hulk-looking motherfuckers <laughs> come in, just obliterate your body. <laughs> and I mean, wow. like gory as all. Like, imagine if they let the Hulk actually do what the Hulk could do: smash, <laughs> like a human skull. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? I'm like, what the fuck? It's gory as all hell. It's um, it's it's um, it's. I think it's really quite camp. It's quite mm, tongue in cheek because the concept's so fucking stupid. But even the characters in the show, when people are telling them what the concept is, like they're laughing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it works. <laughs> is this is this the one John Cheatham's been talking about recently? I'm not sure because yeah. he talks about loads. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned it today in the Discord. I'm ah, looking forward to, to watching it. It's really good. It's. I, I've, I've seen someone on Twitter say oh, yeah, graphics yeah, are terrible. Yeah, this, yeah, I don't think is, they're terrible. I think the, the CGI and I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. This is the one John Cheatham said it's jumped to the top of his um, his oh, rank list. So, number I think one I'm spot on for the episode year. four. So it's really good, but it's a bit, it's a bit like I say, it's a bit camp. It's a bit. It knows what it is, and I like that about it. Like <laughs> it's self-aware, self-aware. That's it. Yeah, like characters are saying that's not real. That, that can't be happening. And then when it happens, like okay, I get it now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like ooh. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with that. Hellbound, really good. Um, I don't know if there's an English dub because I don't bother. But mm. I know some people like an English dub so they can like do other things while they're listening to the show. But I ain't got a clue. Probably is. But yeah, that's the but the, the main thing I want to talk about is something that made me cry. Um, Ghostbusters. Pay, no. <laughs> pay attention, Stig, because it's got you written all over it. I, I watched Tick Tick Boom. Oh yeah, it's uh, I'm ready to. Oh watch. my god! I'm not going to bury the lead. It's the best Netflix film I've ever watched. Ooh, ooh! High praise indeed. And it's considering you finished Netflix. I have completed it. Yeah, platinum. <laughs> and <laughs> I think it's Andrew Garfield's best performance he's ever done. It is spellbinding. Now you know I'm not a Lin Manuel Miranda mega fan like you are. Stig, but oh, mega fan. I, I am now. He's very good. <laughs> I am now. He's directed this with so much passion because he didn't write the songs in it because they're real songs from a real Broadway show and stuff. 
Um, but you, you remember the um, in the nineties and early nineties, the uh, Broadway and West End rent was massive, yeah. wasn't yes. it? Mm. Huge. And um, uh, Jonathan Larson was the, the creator of that. And unfortunately, and this is not a spoiler, unfortunately, he passed away before he saw his success. It's like the night before. Yeah, like Da Vinci. Like, like, like Da Vinci. Like, never, uh, never earned anything, Da Vinci, did he, from his uh, stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it's like that. And it's really, it's a really sad thing. It's like a, a proper bohemian, like, rock opera. That's the best way to, to describe it. And this is the actual, because he did Rent and he did Tick, Tick, Boom. This is Tick, Tick, Boom, obviously, because that's what it's called. But it's the story of how he, sh- like, we're all creatives because we're podcasters in general, but like, like Gadget, you're, you're a musician, I'm a musician. And what, what's nothing worse than writer's block and stuff like that, is there? Oh, it's, it's the worst. so horrible. You just want to look out a window and jump through it. It's just, it just thrashes your head. And Andrew Garfield is just so good at it, at showing you how depressing it can be to have writer's block. He's also... He's, he's very similar to me where he's got a life crisis. I won't say midlife because he's hitting 30. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> mid-30s, <laughs> mid-30s. Oh, yeah, it's your birthday, isn't it, as well? I've got to say happy birthday. No, Oodles. don't do this to me. <laughs> also, also, let's face it, Oodles, you're not having a midlife crisis now. You're not living past 40. No, not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> these, these are my final years, these. <laughs> You're in your golden years. This is, it. This is retirement. <laughs> Time to yeah, retire. I just think, like, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Andrew Garfield. This is my favourite Peter Parker, for God's sake. I like him. He's a beanpole, isn't he? He's, 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 yeah. he's, he's really easy to watch. He's good in social network. But the, he is, oh, my God, he's so good. He's so good. And, like, he's, Jonathan he's Larson's... He's frustrating actors where he can be very good in some things and really poor in others. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's had bad ones. But he, 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 he's... Clearly studied Jonathan Larson's life and his mannerisms, a bit like how uh, Rami Malek did Freddie Mercury. Yeah. I think Garfield's done a better job at imitating like a real, um, let's say, um, person. No, not person. <laughs> yeah, obviously person. <laughs> but I'm going to think of another word. Um, a larger than life character. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it's it's set in 1990, and he lives in New York, Bohemia, New York, Soho in New York, and there's a, the AIDS pandemic's kicking in. Do you know what I mean? All that kind of thing. So it's it's got a lot of uh, social commentary to it as well. And oh, mate, the tunes are bangers. Every single tune's incredible. <laughs> Every single one. Everyone. So did the playwright just do the same play twice? Because that's what Rent is about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> But yeah, I think because I think yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not sure, but everyone even said rents like because they didn't want to put it out, did they? Because it's like this is too much for for Broadway and that, weren't it? It was too much. It's like oh, this is rock opera, no way. But yeah, no, it wasn't that it was rock opera. It was everything else around it, wasn't it? It was everything else around it. <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh no, we're not touching that with a barge pole. And then also, incidentally, don't watch the film version of Rent. Oh, no, it's fucking shocking, terrible. Shocking. But yeah, it's annoying because it's the original actors that yeah, were in the original Broadway play. <laughs> but yeah, like, oh yeah, here, here's Anthony Rapp in his thirties yeah. playing a nineteen-year-old. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, and the thing that blew my mind, Andrew Garfield sings and plays the piano in this fully. Ooh. And he has got a voice of an angel. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's incredible. I don't think he's fully playing piano. Because you know when they do the, and they, they just show the hands, <laughs> like they did with Rami Malek, and rather than seeing the face. But oh my god, his voice really good. It's got her uh, from let me I wrote it down Vanessa Hudson Hudson Hudson's I don't Hudson's yeah that one. She's a good singer as well. Mm. Um, oh, it's just oh, it's just so good. Stig, you're gonna be all over it. Um, Gadget, you need to watch it. Candy, I don't know what your what your, your take is with musicals, but. Ooh. I'll give it a go I don't hate oh, it it's so good it's, I, I, it's my favourite Netflix film they've done so far I know it's not a massive barrier of entry that one but oh god no but it's so good I'm just every oh, if, and at the end obviously I'm just bawling my eyes out it's just <laughs> oh it's just so good and Garfield's like shot up to like some of my favourite actor now he's just so it, he's oh. just he's got another film out this week as well um, has oh, it? Oh, is it this, no not this week it's soon mm. um the eyes of Tammy Faye. Oh, yeah. and he potentially played. Spider-Man. 
but if, who knows? Where he, where he kind of <laughs> has to morph into someone else for that. It's because it's a biopic. And oh, really? Yeah, he, looks, he looks great in the trailers and that. He, looks, he, he really like. does look like Jonathan Lyle. I mean, Andrew Garfield's way better looking. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's, <laughs> he's a very handsome chap, but he's got his big, like, crazy hair and stuff. He's, he looks like he's lost a bit of weight as well, you know, to get a bit skinnier and stuff. Oh, it's just yeah. such to get a back into his Spider-Man suit. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. He's in New York, isn't he? What are you I mean, doing I mean, there, I mean, Andrew? I mean, have you seen that the the, the, the Twitterverse has has, has been a, has been tweetle, tweetling oh, away yes. about um, that picture of uh, Tom Holland and uh, Andrew Garfield yeah. at the GQ yeah. Men's Award? And he goes, "Hi, and I'm he, Tom." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you don't appreciate one how short Tom Holland is, oh, yeah. and two how tall Andrew yeah, Garfield yeah. is. He's a he's a big. The, the, the best the best one is there's another picture with them with uh, Lil Nas X. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, you're, you're yeah with them. and he's like, "Oh, they've asked me to play Miles Morales." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with a cowboy hat on. <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, I would pay to I see would. that. I would love to I see Lil Nas X play. But yeah, <laughs> it's Miles. it's just just spellbinding in this film, and it's it's super bohemian when Bohemian was at its absolute peak. Um, You've said bohemian so many times here; the words lost all meaning. Oh, well, people don't care about like they're just. Enjoying the cells, but yeah, so good, really good. <laughs> uh, Garfield just absolutely. It, it could. Ah, this is going to be strong because this is this is a word. This is a sentence now. It might be my film at year, but I haven't seen June Ooh. yet. Yeah, see June first, and then make a determination. Exactly. And Spider Man's coming out, but yeah, watch tick tick boom. Gadget, what have you been up to? <laughs> uh, so a um, few things. First of all, um, just very quickly. Uh, I found, I finally got round to watching Captain Marvel, which is one, oh. of the, one of the few MCU films I've not seen. I love it. I enjoyed it. I love it. Yeah, it's all right. Not the not the best Marvel know. film. Not the worst. I like Brie Larson as. Captain I just Marvel. like when Brie Larson smiles and winks. She's got a really good smile and a wink. Um, I, th- I thought the cat was the best thing in it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I see. thought the quote the quote unquote twist was the worst thing in it. It's not a cat though, is it? <laughs> Spoiler alert! But the cat is amazing. Yes. Anyway, really good. Uh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. It's like a seven out of ten for me, but I yeah, it pretty good. It's like um, lower down for me. And look really? at my no, list no. now. Yeah, it's like oh, I've, this is including the three TV shows in this list. It's oh like wow, 20, 21 out of twenty eight for me. I just I oh. think it's better than Ant Man too. Oh yeah, it's better than that. I've got to head that. Up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I liked Ant Man too. But it's anyway. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Anyway, aside from that, I've been playing some games that aren't out yet. Uh oh, <clears throat> are you allowed to talk about them? Well, yes, of course, because these, <laughs> these were public things. So the, the first one I'm going to talk about is um, uh, Microsoft did a surprise drop for the 20th anniversary. They dropped um, Halo Infinite in beta. Oh. The, 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 full, the full game comes out on the 8th of December. Not the full something game. Something like that. Who fucking knows? They're dripping. No this, co-op. This part's coming here, this part's coming <laughs> there, and that part's well, coming yeah. there. Jeez. The campaign. You'll see the credits out. when it comes out in December. <laughs> Why can't they just <laughs> do the game and drop it all at once and go, there you go? Because gamers well, are impatient. <laughs> Well, I mean, bear in mind they have delayed it by a year as well. But anyway, on the 15th, they um, dropped the multiplayer beta. Mm. Um, and it is a beta. There's going to be problems with it. I really like it. It feel, It's the first 343 game that feels like a Halo game. Mm. Really? Like, I really enjoy the gameplay. It's very fast. It's very quick. It's given me a lot of confidence for the state of the campaign because mm. it's. Ru- I'm playing on the on the Series X. Um, I haven't tried it on the PC yet. But it's running at a buttery smooth 60 frames a second. It looks gorgeous. The game modes feel tight and tweaked, and I'm just playing like the quick play playlist, so it's just basically all the game modes cycled through with some modifiers on. Mm. Uh, I'm still terrible at it, just like I was 20 years ago. <laughs> Join the club, mate. <laughs> so yep. every, everyone that I've seen on like my Discord, and I was just saying, I'm, I'm pretty shit at this, but I, I'm, I'm enjoying it, so I'll carry on. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm enjoying... I enjoy Slayer less than I did back in the day. Is that the, the which is, team that's one? That's the, the yeah, uh, team deathmatch. Yeah, match. yeah. Um, but that's because I used to be actually all right at Slayer, but I'm really enjoying stuff like Capture the Flag, Oddball. Um, they put a lot of modifiers in things as well, so you get like some of them have unlimited timers or there's certain conditions. There, there is a Capture the Flag mode which they've put in. I don't know if this has been in previous Halo games. Like I haven't really played them since Reach, so I don't know if it's been I any of the three, four, three ones. Uh, but it's called. Um, it, I think it's just called Single Flag, and it's it's basically it's asymmetric Capture the Flag. So you take turns defending the flag, mm. as opposed to having two flags on a map. And uh, I've played a few games that it's so fucking tense. It's <laughs> so good. Um, I really enjoy, really enjoy it. And I've got, like I say, I'm 
I've done enough of the, of the multiplayer to, to know that the game's probably going to be very good. And yeah. I'm not going to get sweaty with it. I'm not going to try and like rank up or level up. It'll be a thing I'll go back to. You're not when... buying the battle pass. <laughs> oh, fuck no. <laughs> Um, I never do. No, um, but it'll be it'll be one of those when like all my mates are playing it, I'll jump in for some multiplayer. Laps. Halo's like, always been good. So, solo queuing is is hard work. You die a lot mm. if you're solo queuing in it, and you can always tell when you're up against a team. Yeah, because you just get eviscerated. Or a mouse, <laughs> a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's the other thing as well because it's got crossplay. You can't actually tell when you're facing up against a PC. You can because you get fucked up. <laughs> No, no, like there's there's nothing on the UI oh, to say like right. this person's on PC. Not even like a different color or anything like that. No, Ooh. like 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 de- like the, there's a lot of games like um, Rocket League will tell you what console people oh, are what on. Oh, uh, Des- Destin- Destiny will tell you whether they're on PC or not and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I I really enjoy it and it's really good and it looks great and great little surprise for them to just because they had this 30 minute. This is 20 years of Xbox masturbatory self congratulation kind of thing. It was dull as dishwater. <laughs> But then they always are. Out. Oh no, this one was especially bad. Um, and then the, uh, uh, they're doing a fucking six-part documentary about the creation of Xbox. What? Yeah, Microsoft, it's Microsoft released on Paramount Plus. Wasn't of all it things. something like Microsoft's like, if you want to do it, do it. That kind yeah, of thing. Basically, what it was, it was, <laughs> it was the guys from DirectX yeah, games. That's hey, why it's called Xbox, hey, isn't it? Yeah, r- r- rather than us doing keep doing these standards, do why don't we just build a standard thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Microsoft, when you're ready, and then, uh, can, is, it, is it the Rock that's? Yeah, the rock launched it at like yeah. E three, yeah. and so he was that. back on that thing, wasn't he? Oh, was it? it no, it wasn't even E three. It was CES in Las Vegas. Is that what it was? Oh, wow. CES. Yeah. Wow. And it's uh, like they show a clip from it, and it's so awkward. It's him and Bill Gates on the stage. Oh wow! The dream and team. Just, yeah, <laughs> it's Bill Gates going. It's lovely to meet meet you, Rock. Because back before we Brian Johnson, where he's called Rock. Yeah. He's like right, Rock. Still it was the rock great watching eyes. you win this title and shit like that and then the, <laughs> then the rock turning to him going well it's great to see you t- t- uh, take the microsoft platform to this level and this level is just like oh fuck off with your corporate <laughs> bullshit <laughs> <laughs> it was so and you're bad. dedicated we, we, 64 megabytes of ram weirdly kind of for thing. someone who could literally just give him you could just give him a mic and he could go you don't need a teleprompter and, does it i don't need it when he was in wrestling when it yeah. comes to all the corporate shit you could see how awkward it so was awkward. because he's obviously been given a script mm. and mm. told what to say rather than just being able yeah. to Kind of do it. And now, though, now he's like, this he's the perfect salesman now because yeah. he sells his own companies, his own brands, and everything. So he's got that shit down. He so it's still wants nat- to fish him. Na- well, natural yeah. now, yeah. I remember that. Well, 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 later on in the presentation, they brought the, the current version of Dwayne Johnson in. Yeah. To, it's a rock. His fucking you mean, his name is The Rock. You mean the rock that's actually eaten the old rock? <laughs> yeah. Um, to, to pimp out that Red Notice film that's apparently terrible. Oh, well, I did review that last time, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. And it's not terrible, it's just not good. Oh. See, when you said The Rock launched it, I thought you meant, like, I could imagine it literally it. just... Sweet! <laughs> oh, launched it. Eating it. <laughs> literally launched it. I have well, one important question about Halo, though. Um, have you met Craig yet? No, because it's just the multiplayer. Yeah, he's not, not, he's not there, is he? So, so it's only Spartan versus Spartan. He did get a really good upgrade, though, didn't he? He's got a beard yeah. now. But he looks crazy. He, he it's been a year, that's why. Yeah. He's got a beard, but it's grown, hasn't it? That's, that's all they've done for the last year is just fix Craig. <laughs> the so mechanics. Do you reckon only rather one than thing actually doing it, they've actually just put in a, like a, they've gone into the code and what, just let Craig's beard grow naturally, see what it looks like. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> There's only one thing I didn't like in the multiplayer, because I've not jumped on this one yet because I did download it, I just had a chance but I played that you know when they had those timed release ones yeah. a few months ago I don't like not having a double jump it's a no I know they've got the grappling hook and that but I, after playing Destiny and Titanfall yeah, I, I, need I, a, I need a double jump but you can clamber other things now though can't you yeah but like, I still need a double jump yeah you can mantle yeah. stuff, but yeah I've, I've been the same I've been like jumping to try and get away with something like rapidly tapping the A button to jump again it's like no there's, why get, is it there's multiplayer like Doom Eternal where you can jump four times in a row <laughs> Some crazy yeah, there's none of that, which no. is annoying. Um, and it, it, it's 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 also one of these things that the the, the person who you're, you if you're in like a one on one firefight, they always seem to have more ammo than you. Oh, like my, right, yeah. <laughs> like I could be scoring constant headshots with the battle rifle and just run out of ammo as I'm reloading. They kill me. Yeah, but they've not stopped shooting me. It's fucking annoying. Anyway, aside from that, so I'm Halo. Yes, excited for. Mm. Um, oodles. I've been play. I played a game um, at three in the morning on on the Monday. After I've heard coming back from the um, the podcast. Mm. I've played Elden Ring. You. I know what's here about that. Next, go on. It's quicker <laughs> than the main topic. <laughs> 
Elden Ring is very good. It is. It's so good. Mm. Um, for those not in the know, you, I, I am a Dark Souls fanboy and a Bloodborne fanboy. You're a Dark Souls. So I'm a Sekiro fan. Um, not as much as, as the Souls games, but I did enjoy what I played a Sekiro. Uh, Elden Ring is all of them squished into one with a big dose of Breath of the Wild on top of it. Uh, yeah. Because it's open world. And you get a horse that happens to have horns. Sweet. Metal. Yes. He's a ghost horse as well. That helps. You just whistle and he appears underneath. He's called Peter. Wonderful. No, he's called like lightning or something, eh? Thunder or something stupid. Oh, Torrent. 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 I knew it was weather. I knew it was weather. (laughs) (laughs) Torrent. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I got into the network test for it, which is something that FromSoft have done for every single one of their games. That's from Dark Souls 2 onwards. Um, and I'm happy to report it's fucking excellent. Mint. Uh, it's also hard as balls. Good. So difficult. Mm. Um, but I, So they did like four or five of these tests over the weekend, but we happened to be away, and I was away from my PS5, and for, for, for podcasting goodness, I missed out on it, but did get the last one, which was 3 a.m. on the Monday that, I, that we came back. And I stayed up to play it for the three hours I got. So I only got three hours with it, but um, I absolutely adored the time with it. Um, the, it. It feels, when you first start playing it, it feels a lot like Dark Souls 3. It's got that similar kind of movement mm. until you press the X button and realize you can jump. It looks a bit like Dark Souls 3, I think. No, it looks a lot like mm. Dark Souls 3. The UI and everything is lifted completely yeah. from Dark Souls 3. But it's, they've taken sort of the core basics of Dark Souls 3 They've brought in a lot of the movement tech from Sekiro. Yeah, so yeah. the jump does look like uh, Wolf. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the jump is like Sekiro, but you can also do a lot of the jumping attacks that Wolf yeah. does throughout the game. Yeah. Um, they've also brought back power stancing from Dark Souls 2. We've been waiting for so long. Easy, <laughs> which works even easier than they did it in Dark Souls 2, because it's now you just tap L1 and you do it. Oh, so you don't have to be like peak level? Nope. Wow. You just have to, be, have to be two weapons of the same class. That sounds like it's going to be easier, mate. No, because <laughs> um, the enemies have gotten a fucking kick up the arse. Got mates, aren't they? <laughs> like, so, 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 literally, when you start this demo, you get your little tutorial area. If you want it, you can skip the tutorial this time by just walking the other direction. Oh, that'd the be game. the dream on Dark Souls Two, just skipping all that <laughs> things betwixt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you walk out into the air, into into the open world of Lingrave, I think it's called. Um, you find your first quote-unquote bonfire. They're called uh, Places of Grace now or something like that. You meet an NPC who mugs you off completely. It's not Crestfallen Warrior this time. The guy fucking insults you. Tells you to go off and die in a ditch. Mm. He's closer to Patches, Mm. but he just basically tells you to fuck off. And then you walk down off this cliffside and immediately into your first open world boss because some of the bosses are just wandering around the open world. And this guy is basically Gyobu from Sekiro. (gasps) Um... And twice as hard. I am Gyobu. <laughs> yeah. That guy. He hits you like a fucking truck. It took me an hour and a half to get him down. Ooh. Um, you have a lot of stuff that they've also lifted from open, normal open world games like Breath of the Wild and stuff like that. Like there is a crafting mechanic. Ooh. There are um, there are objects you can kind of um, harvest from around the environment. You kill animals and stuff. Yes. Ooh. You can kill animals for 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 like uh, their meat and for bones and stuff like that. So they go into all your craft crafting abilities. So it's not vegan friendly then. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, because it's it's Miyazaki again directing this one. Like the character, the uh, the, the monster designs are incredible. They look horrific. They look awful. They look like they're going to. He loves showing tendons off, do. doesn't he? Like just bare oh, tendons yeah. all the time. It's like. Ugh. Well, but because it's open world, so you, do, do you remember when Dark Souls 3 came out and they went, oh, now enemies roam around the areas. They don't just stand and wait. You mean there, they go you? 30 feet and then back again? <laughs> yeah, they patrol. Yeah. yeah. This time, like, I was, I, I was goofing around. I, I, I was um, sacking off a camp of soldiers mm-hmm. and just dealing with them. Um, and then I turned around and there was a military caravan coming towards me. Wow. And like I had Silk seen Road. Them, <laughs> Yeah, like, I hadn't seen them when I went down to deal with this camp, and then I just turned around, and there's like forty soldiers on horseback with this giant, these two giants dragging this huge carriage behind. Please them. tell like, me you didn't get involved. Oh, I fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up rapidly. Um, it's got a full day and night cycle as well, with different enemies coming out at night. Um, like for instance, there is a there is a bridge near the start where you've got a, a soldier on horseback, kind of just patrolling up and down mm. it. 
Uh, if you come back at night time, he is this monstrous death kind of creature on the back of a skele- skeletal horse who will fuck your shit up. Um, I managed to make my way through basically most, about 80% of the overworld available in the demo, in the time I had with it. And because I only had the, uh, only had the three hours with it, I was summoning as I went, was, went through. It was fine. I just wanted to see as much From of it the as stuff I that I, look, I watched, I didn't watch much. I've seen more stills than videos. It looks like that, that beta test. It's like the plateau in Breath of the Wild, isn't it? The first yeah, bit. It's, yeah, it's basically the ground Because that's massive, if you think about it. And then, yeah. oh, when you get the paraglider or whatever, it's like, no, this is massive. <laughs> Well, the, the the section of the map that they gave you to play around with was quite large, yeah. but it's only about like a quarter of the whole map. Ooh! And it took me a long time to get from one end to the other. Um, That's why they're giving you a horse. They've added some quality of life things as well, like so the the bonfires. I'm just going to call them bonfires. That's fucking what they are. Um, are quite spread out, but in some areas where they know there's going to be a challenge, they also have these kind of secondary tokens where if you die, you don't have to go all the way back to the bonfire. checkpoints. You get checkpoints in the middle now. Um, you also have items that use your magic abilities, um, which are uh, spirit summons. Yeah, I've seen them. Which aren't like some summoning characters. Like the one I managed to get from um, one of the merchants was, it was a, a pack of three ghost wolves that you just appeared and sent them on their way to kill things. Great fun, great fun. Um, but yeah, it's it's so good. Uh, they've changed they, they've changed other things like you can only be invaded while when you're in a multiplayer session. Lovely. So. You can't get you. It's not a case of you just wandering through the world yep. and biggest dickus has invaded you. Nope, none of that anymore. So that's getting turned off then for me. <laughs> you've got to have other players with. I you fucking hate getting invaded, invaded when you do, when you're on a run. You're on a little. Oh, it's I so annoying. I fucking hate it. <laughs> um, there is now ambient music over the overworld. Finally. Um, so it's not just like boss music, which is. I, I respect the choice to, to change that. Open like world, it. you want a little bit, don't you? You want something. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't think it looks like next gen. No, it's not It's not like, even it's next not, gen price. It's forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. But like when you walk out of that first cave and you look up and you see this giant fucking golden tree. That's the thing, isn't existence. it? You probably know you can go there. <laughs> it, well, yeah, you can. It's one of the, it, it, it delivers that promise that Dark Souls had where if you can see it, you can go yeah. there. Um, but when you like see it, it's just so. It's the art direction is superb. It is just absolutely beautiful mm. to look at, Ooh. even if it's not like as pretty as the Demon Souls remake. Yeah, because it's not trying to be. Um, it's got so many mechanics on that I didn't even cover that I've seen people talk about in in, in uh, other videos. Stuff like some some of like the aerial attacks you can do, jumping off your horse and that Ooh. kind of thing. And um, yeah, you, the, you've just got so many tools at your disposal. So many impressive bosses, so many impressive monsters. I am so excited for not this game. Not long now, like, mate. Three, uh, I'm not going to be watching any more videos on it, reading anything else about it. I've played the three hours. I know I love it. So you can pre-order it I now, can't, can't you? For it. You can pre-order it now. Now, yeah, you, you, can pre-order now it. you know as well. You're just like, fuck it. Oh, it's already Get pre-ordered, it. but it's, um, it's out end of February, yeah. I think. So, yeah. There'll be loads Very of people fucking time off work that month. <laughs> oh, for sure. There'll be no one like, yes, I will be. work for? Oh, they're all nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, I'm I look forward to watching one. somebody else play it. I think Stig, this will be the one for you. Try, top people that it. don't like Dark Souls. I think this is it. Do you know what? It's not that I don't like Dark Souls. I never. It's just never got on with Bloodborne. Just never bothered with the rest. I get that. I mean, Blood, Bloodborne is a bad place to start I with the Souls it games because it's rock hard. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot harder than the other Souls games. Like this is hard, but there's um, there are things you can do. Like for instance, you can run away from yeah, shit. yeah. like because it's an open world. And um, tied into a fog oh, yeah, boss oh, that, place. That, yeah, that reminds me of the thing that that uh, Giobu looking boss thing that I was dealing with. Uh, so I was de- I had summons to help me with him because I was I was just working through it, um, and I got invaded. And the boss will attack the invaders and, and damage Lovely. them. You love to see it. Yeah, um, and also you, the way magic works in this one's different from previous. Isn't every Souls class games. magic based? Every class has magic mm. base, but it's basically it's your weapon art is your magic. God, you can tell um, G.R.R. Martin's got his bars on that. Everyone's magic. You can, <laughs> you can take the weapon art off the weapon and move it to a different weapon. Wow, so it's like a skill so art rather got, than a weapon art. Yeah, it's, it, they're called Ashes of War. Of course they are. Um, of course <laughs> they are. But yeah, so if you've got like a lightning attack on your sword, mm. but you want to have it on that big fucking axe you just found, well, you boy, you can do that. Okay, I'm down for That's that. Good. 
Yeah, I'm Very down for that. I think this is going to be the one that's going to change people's minds, especially this checkpoint system's massive. That's huge. Yeah, it's huge. The, the, th- the thing is, you don't. It, it, it tells you about the. It's not like you have to find the checkpoint. It doesn't say like checkpoint found. It's like you get this little icon under your health bar that says you're in a checkpoint yeah, area. Yeah. Um, so it's a case of when you die, you get the option to go back to the last bonfire or to this skip the bus or run, whatever it's called. Yeah, that's yeah, cool, and that's what it is. It, it, it's to stop those ridiculous runs. Yep, um, run back. So they've they've put a lot of conceits in for newer players, but also to help with the open. And I'm sure and everyone on Twitter is up for this, aren't they? Yeah, universally. <laughs> really, no, I've been... seen people moaning about the fact that this checkpoint's already. Oh, it's oh, baby Dark Souls, baby Dark Souls. I fucking let someone play it. <laughs> let someone play so, it. I, I, I've already seen reputable organisations like thegamer.com oh, that. coming out say, saying, we, we, we need to talk about difficulty options against us. No, we fucking <sighs> don't. It's a hard game. It's supposed to be a hard game. Hard games can exist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Still should put easy mode in it. I, there, may be, there may be code where they make everyone's health think- a, lot, a lot smaller. To, to, to be fair, the, to be fair, the easy mode in it is um, you can just you can summon people yeah. to go with you wherever, and the the online is at this point robust enough that you can you can have basically three players in your session with you. You can just run around as a group of four, murder and shit. <laughs> it's fine. That's that's your easy mode. No, nah, it's not. I, 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 well, I'm <laughs> not going to get into on here. No, I'm not going to get into on here. But just it's gaming have, politics. This guy just have just have a just allow it. Every other, ga- every, every other game allows difficulty levels where the enemies are easier to kill. Some people don't aren't as good or don't have the capability to do it because of maybe dis- disabilities I, I, I and things like that. So yeah, just I, let them I, I agree from the accessibility, play a accessibility option, option where it makes it a little bit easier for people. Just it it's not an issue. It, it, it doesn't it stop. Hurt. It doesn't stop anyone else playing it in a in a hard mode. You want to play mm, it in yeah. a hard mode? Fine. But other people might want to experience this amazing game, yeah. but just might not be very good. I were bad so, for it. I were a proper Puritan. It, 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 as, as like like as like beginning of last year, we're like, oh no, just just get good, just get good. And then I, I, as I've come to realise, like that, I've cause I, cause I've been going out of my comfort zone. I've been playing a lot more first person shooters. And do you know what I love to see? There's an easy mode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Sometimes you do well, just want to experience the story this? as well, though. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's hard to experience the story in a, in a FromSoft game, though. They're, they're rather obtuse things. Yeah, you have to complete them <laughs> The story is presented in many which, different which is, ways. Which is rather odd, considering they brought in this big, massive fantasy writer. Apparently, this is yeah, it's not known for it? doing, like, cutscenes and stories. Like, like, you kind of find the story through lore and, t- and reading stuff. I've heard you? this one's going to be a little bit different on that aspect, isn't it? I mean, I mean, in the three hours I played, I had four cutscenes in it, which is more yeah. than the entire of Dark yeah. Souls. There you go, then. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where that's where like, that's coming. This, 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 they're still a little bit obtuse and a little bit kind of. Um, I saw that last boss, and he talked. He, he did like a, poetic. a monologue before he started attacking you, didn't he? The, uh, the arm yeah. guy. Oh fuck! What's he called? Metis, something Metis silly or something like that. like that. Yeah, he was a boss. He's got so many arms. <laughs> right. So if George R. R. Martin's done with that. Fancy finishing those books? Oh come on! <laughs> well, George, George, George R. R. Martin was done with it ages ago. So George R. R. Martin did a lot of the world context. Yeah. He didn't do the yeah. in work, in game story. So what's he got like, on he now? He did a lot of like probably writing something that's nothing to do with yeah. fire and I ice. I think we've more chance of getting <laughs> children's books. I think we've got more children's books here. <laughs> we've got more chance of getting Martin to appear <clears> on our <throat> podcast than to finish that book. <laughs> I reckon we could email him and get. Him I on. think it's because that's... he's frantically going through changing everything. Going, yeah, so he's like that last season. He's just scribbling so many notes. <laughs> that's out. actually what he wrote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, El- Elden Ring. Keep, keep an eye out for it. It's coming out in February. And if if you if you have liked any of the Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Sekiro at any point, it's got something for you because it is it's all of those games stapled together with a bit of Breath of the Wild on top. Ooh, look at. Gadget been doing all this market research for massive companies all week. Love it. You love to see it. Right, so that's good. Uh, Biggie's not here now to tell us what the main topic is, so I'm going to wing it. Basically, Uh-oh. what you guys couldn't say last time is <laughs> <laughs> the main topic is media you like from genres you don't tend to like. Um, we were discussing this in the green room. I thought this was quite difficult because there's so fucking many. <laughs> but Yeah, you like nothing, do you? Unless it's Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's probably spot on. <laughs> but yeah, I has, I struggle to narrow. Is it anime? Has it got robot yeah. boys? Has he got a laser sword? I'm in. 
<laughs> absolutely. But yeah, I, I was for me, it was I was struggling to narrow it down. So for everyone's assistance, I know we've all planned this ahead, but I'm going to go first just to let the audience get a grasp of what we're going to do. Um, so people that have listened to this since day one, American sitcoms are by far my least favourite genre in media. I mean, apart from Friends, you adored Friends. <laughs> I feel like... That humble Rachel Green. <laughs> yeah. I feel like 90% of the ones I've watched just hit with... It's like lowest common denominator, pandering jokes, middle-class wankery. However, I do like an, the odd few. And I want to, I want to just I, uh, tip my hat. I've got a hat on. Tip my hat and praise... My probably this this Frasier obviously, but we've talked about that ad nauseum. Mm. A modern sitcom, Community. Have we all seen Community? Of course, I yes. Fucking love Community, and it's not something I'm. I always chat about, but uh, if you don't know what Community is, it's written by Dan Harmon, who now does a little unknown show. I think it's called Rick and Marty. You might have not heard of it, but um, yeah. And um, also directed mainly by the Russo brothers. I'll do a, I'll do a little film series. I think, what's it called again? Avengers. Um, they so, all right for themselves, didn't they? They've all done all right for themselves, haven't they? <laughs> it's starring Joel McHale, who does Netflix stuff now. <laughs> uh, Danny Pudi, who's in quite a lot of stuff, isn't he? He's, Mythic Quest Mythic is the current Quest, thing he's doing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Donald Childish Gambino Glover. He's pretty fucking famous now. Um, Chevy, I'm a proper real life bastard. Chase. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's, he he does play oh, a real yeah. life bastard in that Absolutely. show as well. So he he, he doesn't have to go for himself, role. isn't he? He's playing himself. Yeah. We got Gillian Jacobs, uh, Alison Brie, who's now a megastar. Um, Brie. and if and what my my favorite uh, actress in it is Yvette Nicole Brown. Oh, she's sensational in it. I think she was in one of Avengers films as well. She was, yeah, yeah. And the main thing with Community is, before we go into like my favourite moments and stuff, uh, it's got a massive supporting cast and special guests and stuff like that. You've got big hitters, like you've got Jim Rash, who's, he's, he becomes more of a main character. He plays Dean Dean Pelton. <laughs> I love that it's called Dean Dean. <laughs> so good. Uh, you've got John Oliver, who plays John Oliver. <laughs> Literally. It's just yeah, yeah. He's not acting at all. Um, you've got motherfucking Keith David. He pops up. He's really good. And then you've got Jonathan Banks from Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. He becomes quite a, uh, a main cast member near the end, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, and yeah. I... Ken, Ji- Ken Jeong as well. Oh, God. Yeah. Ken Jeong. He's a, mass- he's a mega star now as well. Um, but yeah, community. So you've all seen it? Nope, I haven't. What? Sorry. <laughs> so community is, it knows what it is. It's very clever. It's very meta which is a quite a hot word in 2021 mm-hmm. um you've got to pay mark zuckerberg 10 pound now oh sorry uh, i turned around like you were money. <laughs> I turned around like you were behind it me does. anytime someone says meta just a, a, a form of him that appears behind you <laughs> yeah we all know he's not human anyway yeah it's actually he, actually sorry to derail you did you see that clip of him saying that he's terrible. like saying he said terrible. something about like um uh not and that might not being human he went actually it's like you as humans went, actually, no, I am a human, obviously, kind of thing. It's just like, it's really weird. Like. Every time I see him in interviews or in marketing, I feel more and more like he's one of them, um, do you know, like they did we, um, oh, fucking hell, the, them holograms that they do for gigs. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> yeah, he's yes. one of them. Just projected onto glass. <laughs> yeah. Just say something like, when I, like, I was a person. I mean, I am a person. It's like, <laughs> okay, Mark. <laughs> Every time he smiles, he's it's doing. so inhuman. And then he's like, I'm just going to eat this burger and froze up on it like a fly. <laughs> 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 Everyone loves anyway, doing that. Back, back to community. Yeah, community. So uh, this is I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you on this, Candy, because basically most of the episodes um, are basically based around the study group in a community college. That's what it's called, community. They're all adults. They're, they all didn't go to university in America or oh, college. The, the, so they're a bit, <laughs> a bit of them are washed out and stuff. And community college is the it's, it's free adult education, isn't it? We have them in mm. England. Um, and they're in a study group. I think because um, in the first episode, Joel McHale's character, he tries to fob them all off, doesn't he? But it's just, he thinks, because he's, he's a, a lawyer that didn't actually get a real lawyer 
education or something like that. I can't remember. I ain't seen the first episode in so he did, long. He, he didn't have enough credits to, pa- um, to pass it. the bar. Yeah, that was it. So, so he so, has so to go he's, to community he's, college. He's perfectly capable as a lawyer, but he has, he has to go back to college to get enough yeah. credits to be a lawyer again. And in his, in his, in his own words, he's cursed by handsomeness. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that feels. <laughs> yeah. So it, people expect him to be not as... Because he's quite a clever bloke, isn't he? Sometimes... Streetwise, more than clever, I suppose. Like mm-hmm. he's, he's been around, but it, it basically most of the episodes reside around this study group in a in a little like Lib- area. What's it it's called? A, like it's a just in the library, social area, just the library. library yeah. yeah, yeah, library. And then, I mean, the first few seasons are a bit tame, but then they've got some special episodes. There's <laughs> some of the, there's the pillar fort one. There's the paintball trilogy. Paintball one is incredible. Every paintball <laughs> episode is brilliant, and just the That's escalation amazing. of it. You don't understand, yep. can it? These are like Avengers style episodes <laughs> in a school. <laughs> the, in a school, <laughs> like people look like they're getting killed by, paint, by paintballs. And like, yeah, like, so- like they, they get shot with the paintballs, and it's like coughing up paint out their mouth, like in um, space. <laughs> I was going to say and space. They've got, like, exactly. Any old Morricone's ecstasy of gold playing in the background and stuff. <laughs> And then the next, because it's like a trilogy, and then the next episode's a Star Wars parody, but it's the same day. <laughs> yeah. and they're all dressed up as Star Wars characters. It's fucked up. And there's one episode, a crazy episode, where Subway, the actual sandwich company, they, 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 they turn him into a human, don't they? <laughs> and oh, he's called Subway, isn't it? The actual yeah. human, the entity, is a man. <laughs> it's, it's so fucked up. There's the, the, there's the claymation Christmas special. Yes, there's the, yes, that's excellent. There's the eight uh, bit gaming one, which is also excellent. The, yeah, yeah. There's the trampoline episode, banging episode, where you never double bounce on a trampoline. We all know this, don't we? Oh, you never double bounce. If you double bounce, you're doomed. But, <laughs> yeah, it's just such a good surreal. I like, like you know, I like an American sitcom if it's got a bit of a British sarcastic edge to it. I mean, uh, uh, this. I mean, the thing, the thing is, you're underselling just how good the relationship is between Troy and Arbed. Oh God! Try and have it in, in the, the morning. morning. At night, yeah, they're re- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so good. So, uh, 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 Arbed, who's played by Danny Pudi, he's he's like the, he's like the Sheldon character in this one. If you've ever watched Big Bang Theory, he's odd. He's like he's very disconnected he's from everybody else. Yeah, he's he's quite clearly mm. on the spectrum. But he he very rapidly gets pivoted to be the star of the show. Oh yeah, um, it's his show after a while. Yeah, and every, he sees the entire world through movie references. Yeah. And it just gets surreal and surreal. He like he adores films. He adores TV. Every at, at, at one point, he, um, the the actor ends up having some cameos in uh, the sitcom Cougar Town, which came yeah, out at the same him. time. Yeah, uh, and so they started writing Cougar Town jokes into the show, which then get referenced <laughs> in Cougar Town. <laughs> it started, it very meta about itself. I think the one episode you can watch that's just completely on its own and there's, there's no... Because there is overarching narratives to it, but the D&D episode... You can't watch perfect. that anymore. Well, I suppose you can't, can you? Well, no, it's, it's literally been pulled from all streaming services because P.S. Yeah. Chevy Chase's character turns up yeah. in blackface. Yeah, he does. I just, I just remembered that while well, I was doing this. Oh it's, it's, not re- it's not really blackface. It's like brown not far fa- off. It's, it's like brown face because he says he's like trying to be an authentic orc or something like that. <laughs> Orc face. It just looks like he's a Chevy face. Chase has got the easiest job in this show because he's an horrible bastard anyway. Yeah. And he's just being him. I, I remember the Russos and interview saying, who's the worst person you've ever worked with? They both went, Chevy Chase. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's apparently, awful. apparently, apparently made it life difficult for everybody on set. The, the put his trailer furthest away from set because <laughs> they didn't want to deal with him. <laughs> Fucking Chevy Chase, man. And the, the, but, yeah. And the, the Dean so is good. delightfully off the wall. Oh. Like, it, it, Dean, Dean. Yeah, he he st- he starts off candy. He starts off just as this kind of like, tr- you know, trying to be friends with everyone, trying to like mollify mm. everything. He's a little bit camp and all that. Uh, turns out he quite fancies Joel McHale's character as it goes well, on. Uh, and then and then he just randomly starts dressing in drag. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> because because it, okay. in one of the Halloween episodes, he he, he 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 does one of those like costumes where it's like one half is like, one thing and like one half this. is like <laughs> dressed yeah. with like high heels. He discovers and it, doesn't it? Yeah, he did. <laughs> I, well, but that's where that meme comes from. It says, hmm, I, I hope this hasn't awakened something inside. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think just going back to what you said about it almost having a kind of British sense of humour, that's one thing that is very rarely captured in American TV shows, isn't it? The kind of British sarcasm. I mean, I know they try and 
ro- like for example, do you remember they did the roast? Yeah. And yeah. it was they didn't quite get what roasting somebody was. They were just being dicks. Well, we all know the king of the roast it. is Ricky Gervais when he does the he award ceremonies. He's the king. Roastmeister general. Yeah. But you have to be funny with it, whereas I think sometimes that gets a little bit lost in translation, which is why a lot of Americans do tend to like British TV shows because we mm. that's just our humour. That's how we're raised kind of thing. You know, it's just, we're just I hate to say the word banter, but it is banter, yeah. isn't it? Well, it whereas, started with like Monty Python. They weren't scared to leave a shot lingering. <laughs> they yeah. weren't scared. Just let it happen. It's really awkward. <laughs> yeah. And Americans wouldn't do that. Was, that that. It was, just that was a big difference between, and I know a lot of people love the American mm. office as well, but there was a tonal difference, I yes. think, with that. Yes. And uh, not to say there's anything wrong with that, because our two nations have a slightly different humour. And I think the office is different. Love... I, I don't consider that like a sitcom, though. It's more mockumentary, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's, I get but what I've, you're saying. Yeah, there's it's still this kind of the sense of humour is just slightly different, and like I said, neither is better than the no. other necessarily. It's just different. Yeah, I, I think because I know I know you like the American Office, but everyone does. Community is a really good. I think the first season's the pop, probably the well the last season's the toughest watch, but the first season's probably you've just got to break through that barrier a little bit. But the, but you the, need you, you need it for the character developments because they don't like each other at first. Yeah. The, by the end, they'd kill for each other. The, <laughs> the, the first three seasons are absolutely essential watching. Yeah. I, and I, it's I, a lot. The, the, there's, there's some stuff as it goes later on. Like when you get to the fourth season, you've got like Chang with memory loss. It just starts to get oh, God, really yeah. hard to watch in places. <laughs> and Ken Jong, uh, in the first few seasons, is Senor Chang, which is just, he's the Spanish teacher. Uh, oh, so good. It's so good, isn't it? Oh, I oh. never finished a six series. I, could, I, mean, I, I don't think I did. It. I don't, don't think know I why. did, mate. I don't think we, I did. We, we, we binged it all, and then we just started watching the six. No, I did. I remember, and I remember last episode, I did. We, and we just, I don't know, we just fell off it. And yeah, we, it was... Um, it was bad, it was bad when, it tro- when Tron left. It, it got dropped off Netflix, yeah. and we just, we just like... Oh, that's a shame, because it was right close to the end, and we, just, <laughs> we just didn't feel like the need to finish it off for whatever reason. I was like, they changed... A lot of the characters left, and they tried to replace people um like obviously tried to replace chevy chase with the guy who plays mike mike yep. erman trout i don't yep. know his real name his name in real life i just didn't like his I thought his character was boring we started off as a teacher didn't he and became one of them yeah so i just jonathan banks yeah just, it just ended a bit poorly that we didn't even finish ending it unfortunately yeah we we, we 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 gave up some point in the fourth season i think it was maybe two episodes after the D episode it was just like yeah, you saw the uh, big the big star trek one though didn't you that's that's one that's one of my yeah. favorite episodes. It's incredible that one. But yeah, it, I think you can say, yeah, I can safely say to anyone listening to this, if you never watch it, just watch the first three seasons. You're fine. First you're three absolutely seasons, perfect. Fine. You've got every everything you need. I think the Russo stopped after season four, and they're the best episodes because they don't direct them all because it's a sitcom, isn't it? Everyone has a little stab at an episode. And the long seasons tell. as well, like twenty four episode seasons. Oh yeah, and I think I think they're forty five minutes long episodes. No, 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 they're only half. I don't know. Oh, there. But yeah, you can tell who's directing who, and in the late seasons, they let the uh, the actors direct an episode, and you're like, ooh. <laughs> you think you think was was um, was Abed in this? Oh, he's directing this episode, so he's not <laughs> going to be in it much. <laughs> Stuff like that. But yeah, it's it's. I just it's one of those. Um, like a lot of people say, like, oh, you've got to watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, I'm getting to like that more as it's going on. I'm finding it cause it's yes, getting it. darker. Oh yes, and I like how. Like evil, it's getting. <laughs> it's pure evil. So it's, I'm for, on like season six of that now. Yeah, first season of Sunny doesn't leave the best impression. It's uh, it's after, da- after Danny DeVito comes into it. That's when it kind of hits its stride. It's, 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 it's season two, really. Yeah, it's but. uncomfortable to watch sometimes now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it also. I mean, it doesn't help that the very first episode of, of uh, It's Always Sunny is what is what it, the the gang become racists or something like yeah. that. And it's just like they go looking for a black friend or something. Yeah, don't so they yeah, need to prove fun. they're not racist. Yeah. So it's just yeah. like okay, bit no. Yeah, on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, I, I think it's I think it's got it's got link it's got ties and links to like always sunny. But it's not as evil and dark as always sunny. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just really good, and everyone in it's really talented. Apart from Chevy Chase, because I don't want to give him any credit because he's a baddie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really good, and it like that and Frasier and a few others. It's somehow burst through my uh, force field of American sitcoms. So, so basically you're saying you like American sitcoms when they're really well written? Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've got a taste. 
But yes, let's move on. <laughs> Look at <laughs> Mr. I like friends over there. Let's move on to him. Stig. Friends Go. is great. No, he's not. It is. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, yeah, so I've talked about this game before. Um, I really struggle with this because when it comes to stuff like films, I don't really have a genre I don't like. Mm. You know, I didn't think I liked whimsical comedies and then I started watching Wes Anderson films. Yeah, so incredible. I do, like, so I, like, I do like them. and wasn't really into musicals and then some musicals other than like Disney ones yeah. which I grew up on. Turns out there's some musicals I absolutely yeah. love. And <laughs> I quite every time there's a new musical comes out now, I'm like, oh, I'd like to see that. So yeah. yeah, so I went with games and I want to talk about Hollow Knight. It and this isn't really from a genre I dislike or don't like. This is more one that I just don't really care for that I'm not bothered about. Oh, it's You've a got new huge metro- gaps. Yeah, it's Hollow Knight is a 2017 game by Team Cherry. And it's a Metro Metroidvania action adventure game, and it's the Metroidvania part. So I've never played a Castlevania game. I think I've played Super Metroid when it first came out, and I can't think of any other Metroid or Castlevania type game I've ever played. Mm. So it's mainly just coming from a blind spot, and it's a, it's like I said, it's a genre that I'm not buzzing for when someone mentions oh it's a metroidvania i'm kind of like okay whatever like yeah yeah there are two there is too many of them now you know i even i'm yeah. getting a bit fed up of seeing them. it's a, it's also them. seems to be a very convenient genre for uh, indie developers to go into mm. so let's just create a complicated platform and a lot of them are shit yeah and also people have described this as souls like as well it I is can't it is test to that but i'm you know not to test but it's not the wrong word sorry um what's that i don't know contest yeah, that's the right word. Anyway, back to normal words. Uh, yeah, so you play as the knight. He's a nameless warrior, uncertain of his own identity or origin, and he wanders and explores the ruined kingdom of a hollow nest to uncover its mysteries, encountering various friendly or hostile bugs. Fight, uh, you fight bosses, unlock new powers and abilities to progress. And for whatever reason, considering this game is quite difficult to start with and before you kind of unlock the map and other stuff, it's a bit you're aimlessly wandering around, not really knowing what to do. But once you kind of get to that point, I just fell in love with it. And it clicks, doesn't it? Yeah, I I put I think about sixty five to seventy hours into this game, got the hundred percent run, missed a few of the post end game stuff, circus stuff. Yeah, I didn't. I defeated him once. I didn't yeah, do like yeah. The, the it's not. There's no need to completely keep doing it and stuff. I didn't do the full. Um, trials oh, of the gods, yeah, the god things, yeah. No, the Colosseum like, are- arena, the Colosseum, yeah. yeah. And Zoit, 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 the mighty Zoit, Zoit. yeah, yeah. You can fuck, beat him ten that. times or something. You got to beat him ten times, and you don't get anything for it. No, oh. he's just you get a, a bit of dialogue at the end, and he's really annoying. So I was like, I'm not doing that. Oh. Like once was bad enough. And You'll I get a like, trophy for it, mate. <laughs> exactly. I was like, I'm fine. I did the 100 percent of the game, and I did some of the uh, other end game stuff. But I was happy with what I played, and I absolutely loved it. Mm. So the game is kind of split into 15 different sections in the map, and you can kind of go back and forth between these sections. You don't have to stick to one. You can't. Sometimes you can't even get into a section until you've unlocked a certain ability, and that could be like on the other end of the map. Yeah, hours. It's like, oh, I've got... And yeah, and all of a sudden you'll click and go, oh, I've got that ability now. I can go back over there and try it. It's like, now I've got the ability to do these double jumps or I can bounce off these walls or this doesn't harm me anymore. But, and they're just so... Every every part of the map is so different and so well thought out. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, the music is incredible. The artwork style is incredible. The bosses are really liked. I never once, they're difficult, but I never once felt pissed off with them. I think the hardest one I ever tr- had a trouble with was with Grim. Grim is rock hard, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the hardest possible game. Yeah, and, and that's DLC yeah. stuff, so you don't even have to, to yeah. do them if you don't want to. He's there is rock hard. I beat him twice in my life, and I've beat that game like 400 times now. There's three DLCs for it, so there's Godmaster, the Grim Troop, and the Coliseum of Fools. I did the first two on the Coliseum. I beat Grim once, and I played some of the Godmaster stuff. Yeah. But um, that's—I think the Godmaster stuff's like 
for the your hardcore gamers. It's just a punish, boss rush, isn't it? Punish themselves. Yeah, it's... There's a few things on there with a lot of blades and a lot of spikes. And yeah. you've got time time jumps perfectly. Otherwise, you die. You go back to the beginning. It's and... got a lot of that thing that I don't like with these type of games where it's a, a tough boss, and guess what it does? It puts normal enemies in it with you as well. Like, mm. ah, yeah. no! You should, you, should, you should go into YouTube and look at some of the people who who mod um, the, that Colosseum stuff. To make Cousin's it harder, great, I think. But the the gods like, bit that's oh. the um the, the, there was one I watched where it, it's it started. It, I think it started off by putting three of the first boss in the game into it. Fuck that. Followed by spikes. Fuck yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> nah. you've got a pogo on spikes, haven't you? Constantly yeah. pogo, pogo, yeah. pogo. Well, I I love the exploration in this game. Like I said, each section is so different. You kind of go into the depths at one point, which is like pitch black. Deep nest. Areas. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, there's areas. Oh, like is that the one with the spiders? Oh. Yeah, when they come yeah. on the screen. I was that one, that one oh, was no. rough for me to get through. Didn't mm-hmm. like that one. No, but every every other know. bug in this, even the dung beetles are cute as fuck. But the, the spiders spider. are horrendous. Oh. Yeah, the spiders are awful in this. Yeah, there's like I say, there's like a greener area which is full mm. of like forestry, a f- fog canyon. Obviously, has its like the f- fog aesthetic and things. that's the weird one because it's got jellyfish in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything's a bug and- apart from that bit. <laughs> And it's just, I don't know what it was, but I just absolutely adored this game. And it hasn't made me want to go and try other Metroidvanias. No, that's a I've, really good example of one, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Other than I'm sat here like everyone else who enjoyed this game waiting for Silk Song. Ooh. Fuck knows when that's going to come. But I, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have played Hollow Knight properly. That's the one thing I'll always think of when I, when I, think, when I play Hollow Knight. I think of you, Stig. It's like, I mean, that time when I came on the other Discord and I was like, yeah, I beat it, and you were like, how long? I went, nah, 20 hours. You went, you haven't done it then, have you? <laughs> proper getting yeah. on at me. It's like, it's took me I, 70 I was hours. Pro- proper gatekeeping this game. <laughs> it's it just like... He went, go back and do it again, and about a week later, I'm like, you're right, mate, it's incredible. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not one per, for one of these people who's like, I must 100% this, I must do everything, but I 100% this, even taking the flower from one end of the map to the other. Oh, we are getting hit. Without getting hit, you have to take you have to take one item from literally one end of the map to the other without getting hit. If you get hit, you have to go all the way back to to where it was. And I found the path, the easiest path through, and I was like, I can get through this path. There's a few it's paths like, to get there, but yeah, you got to proper put your cartography skills in place, haven't you, on the map? Yeah, yeah. it's like right. I remember this part, and I remember that part. Yeah. It's great, and obviously to help you along the way in this game, you can choose. They've got like an ability tree, and you can oh, so select good. abilities. The badges. Got, yeah, you've got up to 40 of these badges. Each has a different set of notches. So you, you unlock notches and one thing might only take one notch, one thing might take three. And you build your character around that. And yeah. so they all have like different things on what they can do. So some will uh, make your nail harder. Some will give you the ability, I think, to rush quicker. Some will ha- mean some, that you Some can gives you poise as well so you give- don't move when you attack. Yeah, give you armor. Some uh, will release like bugs around you that help you. Compass. <coughs> yeah, you also have <coughs> the compass on. Yeah, keep the compass on. <laughs> keep the compass on all the time. Uh, yeah, and they, I, I just love the the ability to kind of just mix and match. You knew you're going into a certain boss, and you're thinking, right, what's the best way to defeat this boss? Okay, if I put this on, that gives me an extra long nail, so I can keep my distance. Then I can put these on, so the bugs will attack him from the other side while I'm yeah. whacking from this side. And it's just really clever about, it makes you think about how to tackle bosses. You don't just run in there and think, oh, I can just swipe at him and I'm done. My favourite one for bosses was the honeycomb one where you couldn't heal anymore, but you had loads of honeycomb health. Love yeah. that one. That was yeah, so that was good. Really good. And I quite like the ones where they dropped from the ceiling and you had to like pogo on top of them oh, to, yeah. to, to bounce around them and keep them off them and stuff. Yeah, it's just, as you go along, if you want, you can obviously read the lore of things. You've got these little caterpillars. Uh, oh, caterpillars, don't. Or grub, the grubs. Grubs. Yeah, you <laughs> found these it. little grubs, and you send them back to the uh, where they need to go back. But I'd, I'd suggest if you ever play this game and you collect all the grubs, don't oh, go back. Don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> Insects are horrible bastards. <laughs> I remember when you told me to do it, because I went, I've got them all. You went, go back. Like, Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a monster. No, you're not a monster. The grub father is a monster. Yeah, he's yes, a he monster. is. Yeah. Grub father. Oh. And it has the same oh, kind of thing. Everything can be. Oh, you're going to go. So it has the, uh, I think it's 
This is like Dark Souls, isn't it? Where you bonfires, you have the benches yeah, you yeah. can save on. And losing your there's, souls. Yeah, there's like a fast travel as well that you can kind of jump on. I love on the, the stag. The stag, yeah, and you can take it to different areas. I, and I just absolutely love this game. Every I, NPC I wish... in that game has got an arc, a story yeah, arc. Yeah, they do, it's yeah. So fuck, even the stag, even the fast travel character has an arc. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. Oh. And I, I wish I had time to play it again. It's incredible um, on Switch as well. Yeah, I played it on the Switch. Oh. Same here. Um, yeah, I'd like, I would like. I would, is perfect I for wouldn't it. mind that OLED one just to play our own night, and then I'll take it back. Yeah, yeah. It'll look incredible on the OLED one, to be honest. It would. Ooh. So yeah, there is a character in the game, um, and she's getting her own prequel. Oh. Um, and like Gadget said, when it's ready, that's fine, because they showed us this cl- the clip of it about two years ago. Maybe it was now uh, a fifteen minute like gameplay thing. Yeah, like it. and it looked like. Everything was ready to go. Yeah. And I guess they just had selected bits of it. Um, uh, but yeah, when it's ready, don't rush games out. I think we've, I think the last few weeks has proven that if your game is not ready, don't put it out. Yeah. Did you hear that a year? Yeah. Yeah. Rockstar. We know you're listening. Don't, yeah. Don't put your games out when they're not fixed. <laughs> it's, um, it's also worth pointing out that Team Cherry, there's only three of them. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, it's it's three people and a few people to contract in for like art and oh, music yeah, and stuff yeah. like that, and it's just it's a super tiny team. And the fact that they built Hollow Knight as well, which is it's I've put about a hundred hours into Hollow Knight all told. So I've mm. played, I, I did the Oodles thing, played through it quickly, yeah, then did a whole other run, and 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 made um not not by stick badgering me into it. I just knew that I had to do that. I just wanted to get through yeah. it, and um I spent. I would say probably the last fifteen hours worth of that was just me trying. Was it Absolute Radiance? Whatever. Oh the my top god! Of the last bosses. It's so tough. It's so hard. <laughs> like one of the hardest. It's not bosses as hard as I've Grim though. With. Not as hard as Grim. But I managed Grim's to do a, that as yeah, well, so yeah. I was quite happy with yeah. that. You know, like these games are. I struggle with like really, really tough games, and managing to do that, and I was just well, absolutely yeah. buzzing. Absolute Radiance was like proper pattern recognition kind of thing whereas Grim was just three tier boss as well Grim was just a dick, yeah. <laughs> yeah it depends oh, yeah. how engaged you are in it as well doesn't it yeah. you know if a game's hard and you're not that arsed on it then you tend to give up but if you really want to know where the story's going and everything you just you find it in the in yourself to carry on and just push through the hard bits and and the knight itself the main character is adorable oh he's a, he's a little cutie so good yeah but with like the added this with DLC and, and updates the added new sections into the game as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, fan made so ones even, as well. So so even if you'd done the game originally, um It's the Void Heart edition, thought, isn't it? I, I'd be happy with that. There's they just added all this extra content on. <clears> and <throat> yeah, it's just I think it's a stern example. I mean we, we, when I think about Metro Advanced, like I'm a fan, my my two favourites now is Symphony of the Night and Hollow Knight. You know what I mean? They are the they are, the, to me, the closest, like, perfect ones. I mean, a lot yeah. of people prefer Metroid over the Castlevania, but I prefer the RPG of Castlevania, so... Yeah, but yeah. yeah uh, Hollow Knight, incredible. I've even got a little Hornet and Knight oh, figurine. Hornet's brilliant. Yeah. Um, Hornet, so, Hornet's still my favourite boss fight in the game, because I think it's... Hornet it's, 1 or 2? Uh, Hornet 1, because I think it's early enough that you don't really have many skills. It's tough, it's, but not too tough. It's tough. It's not too tough, but it's the fir- it's the first one that feels like a proper duel, because the because she's she's faster than you, but it, she's still like about the same size as you. Uses a needle rather than a nail, but um, like the first boss is a Hulk and great big thing with a massive mace that you've just got to jump over enough times and wait for an opportunity. It's the Dark Souls boss, yeah. Whereas with <laughs> Hornet, it is like a proper back and forth battle, and I yeah. really like it for that. I mean, if you watch a speedrunner, they can get her down in one cycle in about thirteen seconds. But it's um it's the first time you get that and like when you f- first get that pattern recognition and you just learn how to do that fight it's just like oh it's, it's so good it's such a good feeling when you beat her. Unfortunately, with um with all on that there is a dark side to uh, the the fandom because I was looking at looking into it today <laughs> and there's uh, the top ten characters you want to shag out of Hollow Knight. I'm like what <laughs> the books the, the, the 2D books. characters the, it's the weird books. and it's, it's really so weird, weird. they ain't got rule mouths th- rule thirty four of the internet if it exists <laughs> yeah. there is porn of it. I was just yeah. like yep. what <laughs> it were you were a website like the game of it would call something like hardcore elite gamers dot. Uh, <laughs> net or something stupid. Oh, so that one like, you've got bookmarked. 
Yeah, it's be your people. <laughs> I'm leading all the forums and the bars. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh god. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever have a point in the game where you just had a massive loss of geo? So, so thousand fucking I was trying to like kill upgrade kill be the, the time that did that. The final like, upgrade of the nail, it's like eight thousand geo or something, which is a stupid amount. Four thousand. Four thousand. You need, yeah. you need three of the right items yeah. to do it. Yeah. But and I lost them on way up and we're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's got the problem with this game is that it just has that just one just one more bit one yeah. more bit yeah. so you do this section and you just go ooh I'm just going to pop into there and it's like and you think I must go back and save this be like, yeah. but, oh, but, the, but, the, but the bench is miles away and if I go back to the bench it means I have to come all the way back through here which means all the all the enemies will have respawned it's like, I'll oh, just go up here and do that. And you just carry on and then you end up fucking up. You're like, oh, my fucking geo's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, there was I, that I, I, remember, I remember reading it in, I, I think it was Edge or Game Team. They, they, I get confused with them too. But they were Team Cherry, a little bit of an interview in it. And they were saying, technically, it's like beneath the hood of the actual game, you know more than five like fade out screens away from another bench because they didn't want it to be too frustrating. But sometimes the screens are so huge. Yeah. It feels like a right track. And verticality is quite massive in this game, isn't it? It's like you can yeah. drop down for ages. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, if you I, drop into the abyss, it's oh, like, you're done. <laughs> we're all the way down. Yeah, I, I, I lost about fifty thousand geo because I. Whoa! Because I, 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 wow. I, well, it, I was at that point in the game where I'd, I'd like leveled up. You most weren't scared. Of, most of what I needed, and I was just pissing about, um, getting ready to do radiance. Uh, and I was just goofing around in white in the white palace, and I just I, I oh felt, mate, that's the hardest part in game. I know, I know, I was an idiot, but it's like what? I was at the point where there was nothing else to buy, so it was like yeah, it, it was still kind of thin. You go, shit, that was that was that was fifty thousand. Still a lot. That's <laughs> yeah. a lot to, of geo. To, that to be fair, I've done that in Dark Souls as well. I've again when I've been kind of late game and just pissing about, I've managed to lose like two hundred and fifty thousand souls before <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> Minging, brilliant. That's an absolute brilliant uh, pick, though. There, stick. I don't. That's going to be hard to top, and I'd, I'd like to know who can top it. Who wants to take the mantle? You're the host. You pick. That's good to see. <laughs> You're running the job. show here. There's only two of you left, so we'll go gadget because he's Fair been enough. the cockiest. <laughs> Might be the cockiest. I'm pointing out. You're in charge here. <laughs> Fucking hell. Ooh, <laughs> clip that. I'm in charge. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Okay, no. I'm, go- I'm going to have some fun with your edit this week, I think. Some- I'm back in action, baby. Now you're going to done it. Yeah, <laughs> you can breathe again. That's the annoying part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I want to talk. I want to talk about another video game. Um, and in a kind of in a similar way to stick something in a genre that I've never really gotten on with, mostly out of difficulty. And bear in mind, I like difficult games. I like my Metroidvanias. I like my Dark Souls. You're a games. masochist, aren't you? I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I like. <laughs> I I I I play I play MOBA games recreationally. Oh, I play they Starcraft. They're rock hard. They're rock yeah, I hard. I play Starcraft. <laughs> but uh, no, the, the the one I wanted to talk about was uh, Celeste. Oh, yes. now we're going for because it. Because the yes. one the one genre of games I absolutely cannot betide is Twitch platformers or yeah. like reaction platformers or yeah. like any any of these games where it it's not about exploring a world. It's about being very fucking good from the oh, very I, fucking I, I start. Jenked, I Jen called mm. it white knuckle platforming. Oh, I hate oh, that. oh God, I feel sick for <laughs> <hate> that one. That. <laughs> Most oh. things you can attribute to IGN make me feel <laughs> sick. But yeah, this, this was on my shortlist gadget because I'm the same. Yeah, love it. So uh, Celeste is a game that was released by uh, what was it? 2017. It came out. I think so. Um, yeah. By uh, the, a company that doesn't exist anymore because it's now called Extremely Okay Games. And there is a reason for that, <laughs> which I'll that. get into. I'll get into a little bit later. Yeah. Um, if it, it follows um, uh, a young girl called Madeline who is climbing the titular Celeste Mountain, mm. uh, she's rocked up at the base of the mountain and is absolutely fucking adamant she's going to climb this mountain. Yes. And then realizes after the first level, it's a very fucking hard mountain to climb, and has a little bit of a breakdown. And then, as yeah. a part of that breakdown. Weird shit starts happening, oh, or rather, she starts shit. she starts dreaming of this um, yeah. other side to her personality, which the community call Badaline. Badaline, I love that they do that. <laughs> I love that. And the game steps up a notch. So the whole concept with um, uh, with the way the game plays, it's a two D platformer. Um, you, it's very movement tech based. Like it, if you want to see a game that speedrunners adore, this is the game for it. 
It's a game where movement is absolutely precise. There are so many things that will kill you. Quick um, reloads. Very quick reloads. Straight back in it's, the action. It, it takes a lot of inspiration from games like Super Meat Boy. Yeah. Which I also hated and nearly smashed an Xbox controller when that first came out. Oh, it's a shame that the sequel wasn't that good. It wasn't really a sequel, was it? It was a fucking endless weird. runner. Yeah, weird. No, no, Meat me Boy Forever, Super Meat Boy Forever, or whatever it's called, that newer one. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a... Oh, uh, um, it's just not uh, as good. Procedurally generated. There's no yeah, actual main levels for it. Yeah, good. No, because it's not the same people, is it? It's not no. The, um, <laughs> it's not the duo. It's just Edward, Ed McMullen. Ed McMullen? Ugh. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, you basically have to guide Madeline through like some really wonderfully detailed and wonderfully designed platforming levels. And as, as Oodle says, it's all quick reload. So you die, you, it's like a two-second reload to get you back to the beginning of the screen. Which is, I think, what made me stick with it. I wonder because if it's if quicker could... on PS5. No, no, it's no, it's the same. It's just li- it's literally the death. <laughs> it's animation. planned like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. the death animation because it's to give you enough time to re- reason with what you did wrong and but, scream uh, at everyone in the room. <laughs> yeah, uh, Madeline has a few moves, so she can double jump effectively. Um, she can climb up walls to a point. There is like mm. a hidden yeah. stamina meter, and she will drop if you cling onto something for too long. Uh, sometimes in rooms you will have areas where there are these kind of uh, golden diamonds where if you hit on them it instantly recharges a double jump so you can chain jumps together yep. just to deal with things like infinite drops uh, spikes everywhere because whoever designed this fucking mountain was a psychopath void teleporters void teleporters <laughs> you get to uh, the level which almost made me quit this one which was the hotel level oh god <laughs> with the uh, books yeah, with the books where there's all this just fucking weird gloop that she can't touch. Yeah. Because it hurts her for... And the some... weird maitre d', not maitre d', bell boy, a bus boy. Ugh. Yeah. You have levels where you're being chased, and when you're being chased, it's um, it's almost like, you know when, when you get racing games and you get like the ghost player that you can race against? Yeah, it's, it's like, like that, isn't it? it? It's like that. She, basically, whenever you're being chased, it is just a, a, a five-second delay replay of you, and you just have to stay ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. And that is more stressful than it sounds when you're having to, on the fly, pick through this map and work out the right route, work out the right movement, where you can jump, what you've got to avoid, where you can drop down. Yeah. They add random mechanics into it, like these blocks that you can kind of dash into um, that will blast you out the other side at really high speed. The fruit. Uh, you get, yeah, uh, yeah, you've got the collectible strawberries throughout yeah. each level, which you have to kind of pick up as... Well, you don't have to, actually. They're just optional it stuff. It says that at the beginning, doesn't it? You can't you yeah. can pick them up. Oh, you can. It's up to you. Yeah, <laughs> but if you if you want to 100% the game, which I yeah. have absolutely fucking no intention of, uh, you have to collect all the strawberries. Uh, when you finish the game, you can unlock the B-sides, which are the oh. remixed versions of the levels. And then there are the C-sides, which are for psychopaths only. I think <laughs> um, they're disgusting, them levels. <laughs> It's got a wonderful synthetic soundtrack. I will admit the soundtrack is one of the best bits of the game. The story, as it goes on, like you wouldn't think a game like this would have much of a story because oh. you don't tend to expect a lot of indie pixel platformers to have these in-depth stories, but it made me cry a few times. It's proper like trying to get positive mental health, isn't it? Trying to yeah. break through those barriers. It, she literally is figuratively... And f- literally climbing a mountain is fucking. Whoa. Yeah, the, yeah. There's a there's a, a there's a kind of a, a heavy kind of depression emphasis on this one. But then it was also so when the game was released, it was originally released under a company called Matt Makes Games. Um, and then about two years after it came out, when the final DLC came out, the uh, lead designer for it, Maddie Thornson, uh, revealed she is trans. Mm, yeah, and that Madeline in the game. Yeah. Is the representation of her transness, mm-hmm. um, and these. So what everyone had kind of assumed at the time, based on the outward storytelling, I think it was is depression. That, is, is, that, is that it was anxiety and depression she was dealing with? No, it's actually it, it, it's actually a coming out story for a trans person. Yeah, climbing a the biggest moment of of her life. Yeah. getting past and it. I remember reading that, and I think it, that makes the game all the more poignant because I I read it at the t- I played through it at a time that I was going through a very rough time in my life with my depression and my anxiety. And that's kind of, I just read it at that surface level and it worked for me and it upset me, but it touched me. And a lot of the things that Madeline was saying in the game um, was things that I was saying in my own head and stuff like that. And then um, Maddie Thorson comes out and, <sighs> and says this and she's like, oh shit, that's more, impact- more impactful than I could have even imagined. And it's mm. so good. 
And there is so much there. There is um, there is a whole kind of community of people making levels for it. There are some psychotically difficult levels that you can get out there. There are kind of fan made expansion packs. There are there is an endless speed running community for it. It is just a beautiful. Is that crazy um, Luigi searching for Mario at top of the mountain mod? Yes, it is cute. Um, but like I say, it's a game that in a genre that I would never normally play. Like I've, I, I hated Super Meat Boy. I hated V V V V V V. Oh, I love um, V V V V V No, I, don't <laughs> I like... loved it. I hundred percent at that on my phone. On my phone. On your phone. Yeah. It's got with your boy. You got too much free time. Anyway, so... I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually supposed to pronounce it like v, aren't you? But yeah, you, can't, you can't say that. It's v, like a spaceship engine. Yeah. V, but um, everyone just goes V V V V V. Uh, this is the, this is the one that, that that kind of clicked with me, and I think it's because of what Candy said before. It's like the story clicked with me. And like the, f- I mean, the first level is hard, um, but it's it not. Fucking is. <laughs> it's not impossible, and you, it, it teaches you that you're going to die a lot, and you're going to respawn a lot. Um, and you remember your first playthroughs deaths? Yeah, well, I can remember mine. It's about a thousand. Mine was a more. lot. <laughs> a thousand. That's yeah. good. That is it. Mine's a lot. Mine yeah. is really good. Mine was over five thousand. I, I think. I was happy to be under two thousand. Well, mine was enough. stupidly high. Mine was like one thousand eight hundred, somewhere around there. Mine but... was, I think, over fi- five thousand thirteen, something like that. Just over five thousand. Oh, I was so always we... dying. <laughs> but Matt Murray posted his. It was like around twenty thousand. I was like, <laughs> and I was just like, "Fuck, this is going to kill me." This game, and then I did go under two thousand. I remember you doing it really, ha- really well. I'm pretty happy with that. Not as good as <laughs> Gadget Elite Gamer. Over no, no. Here. <laughs> I mean, wow. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to go back and look at. I mean, it's, it, it, was, it, was de- it was definitely under two thousand, definitely over a thousand, but it, somewhere in that in 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 wow, that range. Good. But... Hey, it's Gadget from the future here. Um, I went and checked, and it's like two thousand seven hundred and eighty-four. So I was really wrong. Oh well. Um, I didn't do any of the extra stuff. I lit, I literally, I mainline doodles it all the way to the end. Yeah, yeah. I um, that. like I, I, I would love to have the skill to play like some of like. Uh, like there's the stuff where you go into the mountain and there's like the helm levels and there's it's the, the same the as when I was playing C-sides. Super Meat Boy. I did not do the uh, alternate worlds. It's too no, hard. It's, it's too yeah. hard. It by the time like I, I remember when I finished. I think most of my deaths were in the hotel level and then the last two levels. Oh. Um, I remember when I got the end when I <laughs> finished it and I took yeah. my hands off the pad and just put them d- down the table. The pad was like dripping with sweat. It was. <laughs> my, my hands were in like a claw. I was just <laughs> so tense at the end Help of it. Me. Yeah. I didn't realize that you weren't into that genre because we had a good like five years of that. We had Shovel Knight and stuff like that. We had a really good platforming run. Well, and... they say I, I don't mind platformers. I like. Oh yeah, platformers. Shovel Knight is a bit slower, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's more it's more these kind of precision platformers. I yeah. like. like like Shovel Knight to me feels a bit more like a Metroidvania. Yeah. Um, yeah. and also kind of I like these ones where there's kind of direct combat in them or where there is like a, a degree of exploration. Like with Celeste, you're not exploring, you are working out screen to screen puzzles and having to it, work. Meat Boy's the best power to it, isn't it? Meat Boy's clear up yeah. yeah, inspiration. Yeah, and um or Super Magbot, which is that one you play I a few love months ago. Super Magbot. But again, it's like based on reactions and kind of mastering the mechanics of it. I love that genre. Oh, yeah, I will say I'm quite proud. I didn't use any of the um, the Skips. assist mode for uh, for luck. Celeste uh, oh, because I, I only discovered they were there after I finished it, and I felt like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the assist is, is stuff like it's actually what Stig was saying before about difficulty modes. You know, it's like having infinite um, sprint or infinite double. Yeah, it's like why not? Like that. Yeah, it gives more people the option to play it, and fine. I wish I knew it was there because I probably would have used some of them in some yeah. of the areas, especially yeah. in that last level. Uh, but sounds like you didn't need it though. I know, a thousand deaths. I thought I've, I was doing bad. You've got to be in top one hundred in world. <laughs> I don't think so. He doesn't even realise that he's a world record holder, does he? <laughs> in fact, I tell you what, I'm going to Google that. What is the world record for getting it's through? Probably Celeste's none. It's, I reckon it's got to be none, hasn't it? <laughs> somewhere around forty, under fifty. Yeah, that's a, that's a strong run, though, isn't it? Uh, hundred and f- fewest death speed runs. Uh, so any percent runs and speed runs use two deaths. Fucking hell! What? <laughs> Are they deaths that you have to have? Yes. Whoa! Yeah. So that's no deaths, really, isn't it? Yeah. Because I know Fuck there's off. like deaths that you have to do. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because speed runs really to get they don't want to die, do they? They don't yeah. want to die. 
if you die when you're trying to do a speed run, you fucked seconds. it. Yeah. I'm going to start watching some Celeste oh. runs. That's a really good oh, evening. Actually, 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 to be fair, Celeste speed runs are incredible. I That's love watching good them. evening. I bet they don't talk much, do they? The people that are doing it. <laughs> No, no, it's like pure <laughs> concentration. <laughs> oh, I might watch a few of them. That's that's a nice little evening sorted. Mm. Hey, that's yeah. a really, anyway. Let me get back to hosting. That's a really good pick, pal. <laughs> uh, Celeste, I just think yeah. If you've not played it, is it on everything? I think it is, isn't it? It's 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 literally on everything that comes yeah. with the controller. I don't think you could play this on your phone. No, it's not on your phone, but you can get on your phone, and it is good. Ignore gadget. It's good. <laughs> not. A load so, of bollocks. <laughs> let's move on to candy. Yeah, I also really struggled with this one because I do have a, a genre of. Um, I, I'm going with films. I do have a genre that I really do hate, and that's period dramas. I just cannot get on with them at all. Um, like I even that's what saw, genre I think... stig is. <laughs> period <laughs> drama. <laughs> But, you know, even I went to see Oscar nominated films, just couldn't stand it. But I can't think of one film from a period drama that I actually enjoyed. So I had to just kind of um, think of something else. <laughs> and still, you're going to absolutely hate this. I'm so sorry <gasps> um, to bring Dwayne the Rock Johnson up again. But I'm going to go with Fighting with My Family. What? And I liked it. I would. Yeah, no, I did like it. That's what oh, I mean. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, yeah that's I'm point. getting confused. <laughs> Well, I like, I like so it. It's not I that easy, think, is it? I just didn't think it was as good as other people said. But. It's not the best yeah, wrestling so I don't film know, in the world. I don't know if you would class this as a sports film or a biopic, but I'm not a particular fan of either. Um, and I most either. certainly have no interest in wrestling at all. It's just, I'm sorry, it's just loser. not my cup of tea. <laughs> I know I am a loser. I've tried, I've tried hard because everyone says, you know, that I'd enjoy it, but... I just don't know where stuff. to start with it's it. AEW. Oh, she's broken in half. All you got to do, just watch AEW, that's all. Okay, I'll try. I'll try, I'll try for you. No, don't ignore um, him. Go on YouTube and Giant A stacks and all those all those classic all English right, fucking granddad. I hate people when they come, come with that. I'm ah, joking. Giant, giant I'm joking. eight stacks. I was like, yeah, they were shit. Yeah. They were just two big guys running into each other. <laughs> with the bellies. <laughs> Fucking wank. Go on, sorry, Candy. I was going to say that actually sounds kind of cool. I might enjoy it's a bit it. Sexy. Um, so yeah, for those who don't know, it, uh, fighting with my family. It's a story of real life British wrestler Paige and her journey into the world of professional WWE wrestling. And it stars Florence Pugh, the alluring Florence Pugh as Paige, Nick Frost, my boy, um, as a father. You just sound Lena like you Heedy. a lot. He does. You're right, me barber. The neck of the red. Yeah, we're from the same neck of the woods. Uh, Dwayne. The Rock, Johnson, and Vince Vaughn. Um, now, I understand from what Stig has told me that it's just, the reason you don't like it is because it's not sort of accurate to a real story, is it? And There's that, and just, yeah. Like, some of it is, and then some of it, they just piled in there. The whole stuff for The Rock, like, he doesn't need to be in the film. They just put him in there because his name sells. Everything around him in that film is made-up bullshit. <laughs> See, from what I understand, because I did look into Paige and her career since watching the thing, and from what I understand, she does seem a bit chaotic in her own life as well. So oh, she doesn't yeah. really come across the same way she does on screen. Um, but I just find it such a like a comforting, feel good film. It's one of the films I put on when I need cheering up. Um, when I don't want to watch an Adam Sandler film, now <laughs> it's just nice, easy comfort. That's a food. genre I hate, and I don't like any of them. Adam Sandler is a genre be, unto himself. No, there's odd one or two I like, yeah. So, so you must like Happy Gilmore. No. Who's, who doesn't like Happy Gilmore? Me. It's, loser, yeah. it's all in the hips. Um, but yeah, I think one of the reasons I like it is because in sort of true film, film form, it makes you feel like no matter where you came from, you can achieve anything. And when you look like Paige. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just nice to go on that kind of flight of fancy sometimes, isn't it? Like, maybe just my natural ability at something, maybe something will show itself and you can get anywhere and it just, it kind of conveniently skips the years and years of hard work it actually, that's actually involved. Mm. <laughs> decades upon decades She's of She's literally like wrestling from like the age of like 12. Yeah, it's a fucking tough, fucking spark, man. Yeah, it's just... I just find it really nice, light-hearted entertainment, and it just it it kind of came out of nowhere for me as well. I think I went to see it on a whim, not really expecting. It might have even just been one of the films that it was on, so I went to you see it. You snuck in, didn't you? Just tell everyone you snuck in after a different oh, film. Shh, don't don't tell Cineworld. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and I've, obviously I like my boy Nick Frost in just in, in, in anything he's in and he plays your standard down to earth dad despite having a uh, fairly serious criminal yeah. history big yeah. big yeah. mohawk loads of tattoos wrestler yeah future husband future husband he? there's a joke in there about that and he's just like well it's like do you cry it's like mostly like you know something about he kind of just brushes off these GBH. crimes he's done. Violent crimes. Yeah, yeah. mostly just violent crimes, you know. <laughs> bit of bit of that. And uh, Florence Pugh as well. She's just lush and everything, and I want to be pals with her. But I think it probably does help that I know little to nothing about wrestling and a real story. That's why it's probably more me. enjoyable for you, yeah, because Stig's going, exactly. no, it, it was Ed she were talking to, not The Rock, that kind of thing. It didn't need to have, it didn't need to have been based around a true story kind of thing. It, you know, if it was just a nice kind of feel-good film, um, it probably would have been easier if to wrestling fans to enjoy it. But, yeah, for... Um, for what would be considered a sports film or a biopic, which is it just just not my cup of tea, I I just really really enjoyed it. I loved it. In fact, actually, I watched it again this afternoon. Watch the wrestler Mickey <laughs> Rock. That's a good sports film. I don't want to. I that's don't like depressing. sports films. <laughs> it's a good. That's, that's, that's not a feel good film though. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> it's a very good film, but still, yeah. it's not a good feel good film. Yeah, watch Rocket. Everyone loves Rocket, surely. Kurt doesn't. Yeah, yeah we don't uh, talk about that. Yes, <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. Mm, that's a, that's a really good pick. I like. I've. I think I have watched it about three times, and it's quite new. And you don't you don't really do that with uh, newer films, do you? Have you watched a documentary? No, no. Didn't know there was one. That's basically that's basically what the films. Oh, based right. off. A lot of those scenes with Nick Frost and yeah. in the head. Heady, they're, they're, um, oh, like they're, the interview in their house and stuff. They're, li- they're literally mm. taken from the documentary. There's a documentary about Paige and her family. And they're pretty um, rough in real life, like pretty like down to earth. Well, rough. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're oh, they're, they're uh, the, the carny, proper carny rest. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> anyway. But I think they actually they show that. some of the, um, they show some of the real documentary, I think. At the end, they certainly, I think it's, um, they've got a, some video clip of them all watching her first match, I think, which is um, yeah. the same as the scene in the film. I think was Paige yeah, considered like it. a good wrestler because she's too new for me. Oh yeah, she's a great wrestler. She's just she's um, retired now because of injuries, and she's mm. married to that. What's his name? Not married, but she's with that oh, she's... rock star guy. Emma wears leather jackets. Oh, no idea. <laughs> she um, she had went for a bit of a bad time of it with people and relationships and things. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's so. nice to know that she was actually a good wrestler, though, because a lot of them... Oh, no, yeah, she was. Mm, a lot of them... Well, she, I mean, she would have to be, wouldn't yeah. she? You don't just get to the WWE without, uh, being, without having a... Sometimes it's what they look like, not how they uh, wrestle. <laughs> yeah. In that case, I take it back. Yeah. <laughs> In the WWE, wrestling ability isn't the be-all and end-all. No. It's entertainment factor first. Yeah, no, it's not even that, you know. <laughs> shite. But, I mean, even to not get injured, you would think that would take some skill. Yeah, yeah but she, that's the problem. She's... she's because of starting so young and obviously kind of being in that, um, like a small in wrestling promotion where those British ones where they go to working men's clubs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the health and safety isn't exactly. It's not even a proper uh, ring, is it? It's rock hard. Yeah, <laughs> she suffered some bad injuries and she came back from a really serious neck injury. Oh, and I think within like the first month she got kicked in the back and basically kind of whiplashed her neck and she's done fucked wow so i'm just looking she's not very old either she's only no. 29 now i know she's like an influencer slash model she's, now, she's, isn't she? she's literally mm. the like prime age yeah. for uh where she should be um top of the you know yeah. women's division at the yeah. moment but that's what that's what i was gonna say what, what kind of age do wrestlers retire or do they oh, retire yeah. as soon as Rick they're Flair. injured um <laughs> It depends. Female wrestlers tend to retire within the thirties. Some of them want to go off and have families. Um, mm. And male wrestlers just depend on their fitness. Really, yeah, look at the Undertaker. I, watched... I was going to say he's in his sixties when he retired, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, Fifty-eight or something. Not far he, off. he was fucking. He weren't really wrestling by the end, was he? He was just the, turning the last up. ten years. He's been terrible because yeah. of his injuries. He's just been plagued Stood with injuries. There. Slow, but you get guys like Billy Gunn was literally fighting on TV this week. He looks incredible. 
And he's 58 years old and he's, he's massive. And pure looks, massive grand shape. Ah. Yeah. And Sting was still going. Yeah. Like he, re- he, he came back for a short stint a few years ago, got injured and was like, nah, I'm done. But then this last year, he's done a few matches and, and he looks great. And he's Polished like, the bat and he's running down. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. But yeah, it just depends on A, their fitness, their ability, and the injuries they've had. Some mm-hmm. wrestlers go throughout the whole career without having an injury. Chris Jericho is now about 50 years old. Wow. And he only had his first ever injury. Like He looks good year. still. Chris Jericho, uh, yeah. Some of them just look after themselves. Yeah. Oh, look at The Rock. He's not a young man, is he? And he's, look, he's never looked better. God, he's incredible. <laughs> he literally yeah, never he looked better. Anymore. Last time he went back and wrestled, he said he did like, he did a spine buster or something and just tore a lot of muscles. In yeah, his chest. yeah. It's different yeah. than bodybuilding, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, he's not he doesn't work out for wrestling purposes. No, 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 how it no. looks. Yeah, yeah. Because like, if if you look back at the Rock when he was wrestling, looks he's still big. Like he does now. Well, he's still big, but it doesn't look out like he looks no. now. Like I say, mm. he looks like he's eaten him his past self. He's he's eating. <laughs> <laughs> he's just naturally a big guy though isn't he like yeah, no matter yeah. what exercise he do he would never be like a lanky dude but yeah, well, isn't that nice to talk about wrestling without big ear <laughs> moaning about it <laughs> moaning about it I got going <laughs> <laughs> but yeah brilliant he so, was showing an interest last week actually I was watching it really? in the morning before we were going he was asking me some questions yeah he's just trying to you me that's all <laughs> he was yeah so yeah let's. I, I, what I want to know is that, like you know what I haven't seen in a while that big bulging sack of responses from our community and listeners how bulging is it? it it's very bulging you were too infected to see the bulging yeah, I went looking I closed my eyes <laughs> yeah so starting off the bulging sack this week um, it's a biggie who's that is he new yeah the, the, the one that couldn't be here oh yes that's the guy and I'm not going to attempt the voice <laughs> hello it's me Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let, let him get unless into character. I, let's dig get well, yeah, into character. Well, un, 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 unless, I, unless I do the quattro clef one. No, let's dig get into character. He's the best. Here we go. All right, it's me, Biggie. <laughs> Apologise for missing tonight, <laughs> but I'm ill as fuck, and not in a hip-hop way. <laughs> Since the meet-up, working my ass off, I've been quite... <laughs> you can stop you can stop I'll, I'll take over because this is going to hurt your chest far too much it was spot on there well done I starts going in and ends with like New Zealand <laughs> it's about 10 octaves higher than his actual voice as well oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm Biggie <laughs> oh, I'm Biggie I'm trapped in a closet sounds nothing like me out. <laughs> sounds nothing like me anyway he says since, since, since the meetup Fuck. work my arse off I'm quite run down with a head cold uh, a head and a chesty cold uh, it not been up to much this week, other than I played some more Disco Elysium. He's now done the autopsy section. Um, and he's really enjoying the morning show on Apple TV+. Plus, and he's hit season two of that. Oh, is that and good, actually, for... the morning show? It's supposed to be really good, yeah. Hmm. Uh, his choice for, the, for this tonight was supposed to be musicals. He says, really not my cup of tea, but I, and I tend to avoid them. But for some reason, Moulin Rouge, two, mm. from 2001, no directed by Baz Luhrmann, kept my attention. I was impressed the cast members who couldn't generally sing, Ewan McGregor and Nicole Kidman, for example, mm-hmm. could hold a note or two, and the fast-paced editing, lavish costumes, and set design and soundtrack had me entertained. May have even had a tear in my eye. I like- watch good, watch good musicals. Yeah, I, 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 I it's not even Baz Luhrmann's best film. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I hate musicals, but I watched this and enjoyed it. It's like, well, if you enjoyed that, go watch one of the really good ones. <laughs> Bless him. Um, Adam Golightly has said, not sure if I'm too late for this week. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're fine. You got there, um, Adam. You got there. <laughs> I struggle to think of one. However, ball slash sports games, they're just not for me. My close mates all love them. They've tried for many years to get me involved, and it's just not for me. I've given a few a go on Game Pass with friends thinking the multiplayer side might make it more fun. But no, can't stand them. <laughs> that is until Rocket League. Yes! Yeah. Wikipedia says it's a sports game, so I'm running with it. It is. Don't think I'll ever get bored of playing this game with my pals. However, I've just looked at my stats to see how long I've played the game, and I now feel slightly sick. 28 days, 14 hours, and 34 minutes. Jesus uh, Christ. Wow. Remember when we he checked ours, and ours wasn't far wow. off. We checked ours, didn't we, that time when we were playing it? Were maybe not 28 days, but... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it, was, it was quite high, but when we play it, we just chat, don't we? We don't play it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, Super Natty Cat sent a very long Twitter thread to us. Email, darling. Email us. Oh, come on. <laughs> Can't, can't get the contact form. Let's just remember, <laughs> just remember, Super Natty Cat. Emails were meant to be for Twitter. It's not like it's a new thing. <laughs> Do you know what I 
Anyway, she said, I hate musicals, but I absolutely love The Book of Mormon. Great musical. Written by the heroes Matt and Trey, the geniuses behind South Park, it's a Broadway show about two Mormons, Kevin and Arnold, fresh out of the academy and ready to spread the word of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, Kevin finds out instead of spreading the word around his dream destination of Orlando, Florida, aka Disneyland, he gets sent to Uganda (laughs) with the worst elder of all, Arnold. The pair are immediately thrust into real horrible issues such as AIDS, genital mutilation, homophobia, famine, and a warlord dictatorship. What the fuck? It's so good, Um, though. (laughs) Now, how do you make this into a musical, you ask? With satirical, very close to the mark humour, a bouncy jingle, and some dark, comedic, yet clever lyrics. There were parts where I really tried not to laugh because of how awful the subject matter was, but in a room full of hundreds of people doing the same, it was safe to do so, and fuck me, I laughed so much my tampon fell out. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I didn't know that! This, oh up. my god, that went dark, that escalated so quick. Oh, we've all done it. No, we haven't! <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> Did it fall out or was it shot oh, out? Oh. <laughs> It's not a weapon. <laughs> End up in your mum's cup of tea or something. Oh, candy. Oh, I'm done. Sorry, lads. I'm spent. I don't even eat meat. Stop talking about this kind of thing. It's disgusting. It's actually just reminded me. I um. What? I really Here we go. See, no, not that. All right. Book a moment. I really want to see this show, and so it just reminded me cause they did a tour of it, and I yeah. missed that. And it's back in London, uh, the Prince of Wales really here good, in London. Mate. It's the, all the, Just all the best. It's on my birthday weekend next year, so Ooh. I might. might all the I best songs down. from like Team America and uh, South Park movie, I think they're better than that in Book of Mormon. They're really good. So. Anyway, mm. anyway, she goes on to finish off saying, oh, that the show was it. No, no, I just <laughs> lost it. Uh, the show was so good in the program, the church even say they're cool with the humor and offer a few words about Jesus himself. It's touring again now, so if you can, go. I promise you will never look at Star Wars, STDs, or frogs yeah. in the same way again. <laughs> the music is brilliant, and I freaking hate musicals so bad. Mm. There's nothing wrong with musicals. I, I, don't like this. I don't like this anti-musical. <laughs> what what we and Stig are going to do, from, we're going to do a patron-exclusive musical podcast <laughs> where we rank all the musicals. <laughs> I I'm not, like, you know, well into them. I just I enjoy like them. them. I, like, mm. I like them. And do you know what? If you want a really good, feel-good film, Singing in the Rain is incredible. Banger. Banger, mate. Kind of buries the lead, though, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone knows the songs from that. Yeah. You'll have heard them on adverts and shit before. Yeah. Uh, Smash is clear, said, uh, so mine is super recent. Never got along with turn-based combat. It just felt slow and clunky, and it didn't appeal. I grew up playing Warhammer, so I didn't see the point in a video game that aped turn-based tabletop role-playing game systems. Mm. That changed when I tried Divinity Original Sin 2 this <sighs> year. It might just be D&D with the serial numbers filed off, but it does a great job of making turn-based combat feel sharp and snappy. Players make real progression that feels meaningful and not just uh, 2% more likely to deal critical hits when stood on their left leg. The characters and stories are intriguing. I sank 70 hours into it without any effort and I'm really tempted to go back and play again with different party members. Hard agree. I yes. fucking love that game. First game I downloaded on my iPad. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Such a, I love that game. I love it. Yeah, I need to play it again. Mm. Um, Ray said uh, I generally do not pay attention to rom-com films which makes about time such a pleasant surprise I enjoy that it started as a story about a boy winning his girl but ends as a story about a man finding his happiness Tim's time travelling power was not the reason Mary fell in love with him cannot prevent his sister getting hurt by bad boyfriends and a car accident and certainly did not buy him more time to spend with his father this sounds fucking depressing You've never seen however it, it did uh-huh. give him a second chance to relive every single day so that he can appreciate how sweet the world can be without the worries and tension of his first try until eventually he became so good at discovering happiness in life and no, long- and no longer had to have the time travel ever again mm. and as Tim puts it in fact we're all travelling through time together every day of our lives all we can do is our best to relish this remarkable ride. I, for one, certainly relish the remarkable ride with a sappy romantic comedy. It's good. I liked it. Yeah, yeah I did. It was really good, really funny. It felt good. Um, uh, John Cheatham has said, Hello, folks. War films. Never been big on these, specifically those set in the World Wars. I'll watch Mountain Blade battle movies all day, however. But in recent years, I've loved two World War films. Firstly, The 800, which is a film from China and last year's biggest grossing movie worldwide. Really? It is the story of Chinese soldiers who defended a warehouse on the perimeter of the French concession in Shanghai as the Japanese took the city in 1937. Far from the jingoistic likes of Jarhead, there's no propaganda here. It's a frank and 
<laughs> it's a frank and painful depiction of the suffering of war. The men in the warehouse are really just boys. Their mums are waiting for them at home. They try and find ways to escape the approaching battle, the officers fighting to maintain order and morale. Meanwhile, because of the diplomatic mores in the international community at the time, the Japanese have agreed not to attack the French concession, which contained Western businesses and embassies. So as these young lads are fighting and dying, British, American, and, and etc., uh, British, American, and other expatriates lazily watch through binoculars, pay, placing bets on the outcome from the other oh. side of the river. It's a striking, harrowing movie that never glorifies war, and I recommend it. I'm writing it down. And also a shout out to 1917. A technical mm-hmm. marvel of a movie shot to look as if it's one take, even if they did do some trickery. Yeah. <laughs> the coordination and planning it must have taken to have everything happen just at the right time is mind-boggling. It's also a thrilling watch. I saw it compared to more of a survival horror than an all-out war film. It's about, getting ma- about being massively outnumbered, conserving ammunition, not knowing what's around the corner. Again, a very good watch with two really good leads. And I'll agree, 1970 yeah. is fucking brilliant. And I don't like war films. War never changes, mate. Yeah, you'll find it does. <laughs> depends on whether it depends on whether Bethesda are involved or not. <laughs> I think there's only two cuts. In that, two. Actually. I think it's two. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's two. And yeah, one, of, one, one of them is one of them is a mean, beam in it. A wooden beam. That and there is a part where it actually does fade to black. Yes. And back out. It's like you can't count that as a yeah. one yeah, shot. Yeah. 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 He goes. He goes to sleep. He goes and to sleep. Back up yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kurt Lewin, best boy, has come up saying, "Hi, Emmy crew. I don't like musicals, or at least I don't like the best musical boy. parts of films in them." <laughs> wow! So, like the Disney films, I always hated whenever a musical number would start. What? If if I had the choice, I'd watch an edited version of these films Fucking with the musical out, bits in them. Ethan. <laughs> However, I didn't mind one song in Mulan. One <laughs> song, and one in the first Frozen. That's about it. Well, I mean. They're the best I mean, bits. Not the best Disney film, but the, it's got some banging tunes in it. They're the best bits he, of the he films. He knows what he did. He, he gave Lion King a two star and said, "Fucking now, oh get out." That's like <laughs> Lion King is Hamlet. Hamlet's a five star fucking story, and the, and the music's incredible. Yes, mm-hmm. it's Elton John, Tim Rice. <laughs> ah. He says, "But there is one exception to all of this, and that is La La Land." To oh, be honest, yeah. I can't even good. explain this. Why, as it's perhaps even more of a musical than some Disney films, but for some reason I love it. Maybe it's because it's got more talking in than other musicals, so it's less of a musical. And there isn't actually fair, that many songs in it compared to other films when you look at the soundtrack. <laughs> you don't like music, does it? He likes this musical because it's less of a musical. There is a probably a 40 to 45 minute part of this film where no one sings. Mm. It starts off with loads of songs. Then there's a massive section in the middle where no one talks and ends with some socks. That would, no that sings, would, that would, before I even yeah. saw it, that was on nearly every review I watched of the film. It's like, there's a bit with no music. <laughs> it's a musical without music. Some bits. That's why he likes it. Appealing to all audiences. Mm. It's such a modern classic, that Good one, film. isn't it? It felt Good like film. it could have been filmed in the, with the exception of the modern elements, but it felt like it's something that could have been filmed in the 40s or 50s yeah. and it wouldn't he, have been out of place. He, he does go to redeem himself slightly, Stig, where he says, or oh, maybe it's because I really love the story and the characters, but yeah, I love it and I hope I can find some other musicals I'd enjoy just as tick, much. Tick, boom. So he's, he's, he's open to it. Uh, and then he finishes off saying, not media related, but I also like the theatre musical Blood Brothers. I hope they make a film of that one day. I have seen that. I went with, I went with high school to see Blood Brothers. Really good. Um, really good. But yes, yes, that is the mailbag for this week. <sighs> oh, we've unleashed. We are unloaded. And it feels good. Right, we've got some social... It, it, no, it, no, it doesn't feel good. We, we, we need to have words about Supernatty Cat. I think we need to banner. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are not... I'm emotionally recovered Super from Nat that Cat one. is not allowed to send feedback until next episode. That's a ban. <laughs> okay. Glad we've got See what that I did down. there? See what I did there? Yeah. yeah. I'm always... I'm, I'm, if anything, I'm a kind host. Right, so... Merciful God. Merciful God. God. Ooh. Call him <laughs> God. Right. The goddess is going to do the socials. There you go. As always, you can visit our website, modernescapism.co.uk. On there, you can find a link to all of our socials, contact details, and our merch store. If you've got any comments or feedbacks like Nat, or if you'd like to contribute <laughs> oh, to, our heave, <laughs> to our heaving More set. More like that. <laughs> maybe your tampon stories but you know Aww. you can fill out a form on our website tweet us or email us on modernescapismpod at gmail.com we also have a discord server if you'd like to join our community of listeners for a chat about the podcast and many other aspects of pop, pop culture pop culture pop culture pop culture pop culture is in there as well <laughs> there's a bit of everything yeah. everyone's everyone's welcome um, 
yeah, our community are just amazing. Our listeners are amazing and nice focus on me- mental health as I well. So children. if you need a bit of support, <laughs> yeah, come and join us. If you enjoy Twitch and want to keep us company, you can find us on twitch.tv slash modern escapism. We have semi-regular streams at the moment. Best way to find out is just keep an eye on Twitter or even better, just give us a follow on Twitch and you'll be notified whenever we go online. We've spoken about our Patreon. If you're feeling generous and want to give us a bit of extra support so we can continue to bring you new content, please consider subscribing on patreon.com slash modern escapism. Any contributions are greatly received. And if you want to support us in a non-financial way, leaving us a five-star review wherever you can makes a huge difference. And we really love to read your feedback as well. Uh, Next week, our subject is your favourite tech in the last 10 years. I'm so excited for this one. I'm going to say you boys are going to have a field day. Tech, 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 tech. (laughs) Oh, look at Gadget. He's he's just like, (laughs) he's looking around his room going, Tech. <laughs> there is a lot of tech this, in here. To and this, be fair. and this, and this. So yeah, What's that, uh, that um, old Greg is just like, I got this one. Yeah, I got this. I got that one. This is as close that. as you can get to Bailey's without getting your eye wet. <laughs> <laughs> Ever drunk Bailey's from a shoe? Yes, tech. Big tech episode. So bring. I know, I know some of us uh, community are, are like really old. Like Biggie's probably going to talk about Betamax and stuff like that. Or maybe his vinyl player. <laughs> no, that's why we keep it to the last 10 years. <laughs> the wireless. Uh, so, yeah, let, let's... It could Because it's going to be a really nice positive... Uh, the last decade has just been a great for tech, so I'm, I'm buzzing for that episode. Ooh, it's going to be good. But yes, that is the show. Uh, thank you for everyone that wrote in. Thank you for listening. Um, get well soon, Biggie. We miss you. And for uh, all the patrons, we will meet you around the back and we'll have a little bit of fun. But for everyone else, good night. <laughs>